Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rise of Drekus Chapter 2. It has been uh, a hot minute since we last played. How are all of my favorite players in the world doing today? Fantastic. Excellent. Ooh. Excellent. Yay. Does anyone remember where we left off? It's been a minute. Good question. What happened in our last session? Okay, going through my notes. I had questions for the orc. Oh, were we questioning the orc <laughs> at the beginning? I think we were preparing to questioning the orc. Got it. Yes, there was some interrogation. Uh-huh. And then there was... I have so much info, but not descriptive. Like, and then we went here, and then we went there. We found uh -huh. one box of avocados with a mixed state of unripe to overripe. Yes, but in between... <laughs> Why did I put this down? In between questioning an orc and a box of avocados, there's this really big event that, like, dominated the entire session. We did go to the castle thing! There we go, there we go. There's a huge fight over the fort. This massive fight in which uh, the party was sort of ambushed, sort of surprised, and uh, had to make their way through an ungodly number of orcs. But and, and some, and uh, some dogs as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. And yeah, but we succeeded. We wiped the we wiped that fort pretty much clean. We let some goblins survive, who are mm -hmm. now. Uh, Oh, I believe right. I believe Crum is in charge of them, even though she's not very happy with it. And Vincent is uh, in charge of, I guess, keeping them alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and we have an unconscious uh, orc leader who's tied up and ready to be questioned soon. Oh, that's right. You brought the um, orc leader to what to zero HP exactly, so that they yeah. would not die. They would just be. There's going to be another sad interrogation, not leading anywhere, you know, decapitating another person in the backyard. Probably, but it's not like we're giving up anytime soon. <laughs> we're trying. Excellent. Oh, we're there trying. was something about an, the next ship is coming sometime after the next full moon in 14 or 15 days. Yes, so there's another ship coming yes. um, to the outpost of the Varasi people. Um you know, bringing bringing back. I don't know more. Not necessarily more troops, but they are getting ready to pick up the stuff. For example, we have here mm -hmm. and bring it back to Solemn to show them how valuable this place is. Um, so we need we need to think whether we want to go to Fort Kachuma soonish, which is the fortress of the Varasi people in the jungle on the other side of the mountain, um, and surprise them there before the ship comes over, or whether we are going to get reinforcements ourselves um so like send our ship back to get reinforcements before they come over but that's for mm -hmm. a point after the uh questioning i believe all right well here we are taking a rest in the fort it is a, a relatively peaceful time after a long and dangerous battle in which I count zero dead of your own team it has gone fairly well. Yes. But we, did, we did take a lot of damage though, unfortunately. Chrome and I have uh, taken a beating. Yeah, yeah. And there's we're not fine. there's not any available magical healing that we're aware of. So Just a good night's rest and some supper. Mm-hmm. Just a yeah, good... Just walk it off. 14 yeah, days. Just shake it off, shake it off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing a ginger shotgun fix. Yes. Okay. Well, party? What are you gonna do? It's early still, right? You, you left... All these actions took place earlier in the day, and maybe you took a few hours to sort through some supplies and some notes and some corpses and whatnot, and, um... That orc leader is gonna be rousing any moment now. Um, Anything in particular we want to do, or should we hop right into the orc leader interrogation? Why did we keep him alive again? Well, because it might know more about the fortress beyond uh. the mountain, what's going on there, uh, what the next shipment could be. But also, maybe we should also just, um, before we interrogate the orc, 
talk about the paperwork that we found in the in this fort as well because mm -hmm. there was some documentation there and I think that's something we should, we would probably discuss. I think I gave it to Vincent to have a look at it. Um, oh, yeah. Just Vincent's, to make sure there's... Vincent's eyes light up at the sight of paperwork. Oh! Let's, let's take a look at this with my awesome... Oh, what was it called? Bureaucracy? Bureaucracy skill. Yes. Oh, amazing. Um, well, it's beautiful. There's, there's so much going on here. There's activity logs, there's weather reports, there's a rough map of the area. There's a whole list of auspicious signs. There were three dolphins that reached out in the sea. That's a good sign. There was a dolphin spotted in the lagoon. That's not a good sign. There were five pelicans in flight in a perfect V flying towards the west. That's a good sign. A donkey birthed twins. That is an unusual sign it's not the you know it's not the biggest of, of all things but that's still an unusual thing going on something we, we seem to be seeing many signs of good fortune at least written down in the the notes here um would you make me no i don't even think you need the bureaucracy check here uh based on the reporting style and all the the information that you have gathered here you get the distinct impression that the, the group here, the, the Ferocity Empire Scouts here, are a detachment of a, a much larger unit. Um, there's very direct reports about this land, and the context seems to be in the... You're getting the, the, the feeling that these reports are written from the perspective of... Uh, the reader is going to have like multiple things in front of them and they'll be evaluating these things in comparison to one another. It looks like a exploration report or a investigative, like, hey, maybe this place could be useful for us one day report. Um, and not so much a, we intended to come here and conquer and now we're um, quelling the population. It's a lot more sort of big picture exploratory uh, details and not a lot of nitty gritty details that you would include if you were like planning on running uh, a town or a location or overseeing, you know, day to day operations for a long period into the future. You get the the distinct impression that these folks are probably going to leave one day, if you know, one way or another. Yeah. Um. But that also, if Vincent like tells me about that, that also doesn't sound to me like I I would expect many reinforcements coming on that ship though, right? It doesn't seem like conquering is imminent, um, and they need a lot of hands to I don't know clear. Like there's no indication that they're trying to clear out the jungle or you know need need more people for a certain cave or anything because that would also mean they need more. I don't know, maybe more equipment that needs to be shipped over, but there's no indication for that. No, not really. Like, there are definitely reports about we have found tin on the other side of the mountains and we could, you know, based on the available supplies that we have where we don't expect to be able to extract any, but this is a good location for, um, for, for tin mining. But the... You know, the language is very much like if we had more supplies, we could open up a full tin mine over here. But it's not like we are actively requesting these supplies, you know? It's more of a... It's the reports of a scouting party, not the reports of the, the final army. Which sort of tracks with the, the hundred-ish people that are here. Okay. Would I be able to guess that the captain would have written this based on everyone I saw here? Yeah. Great. Well, Garnasha is waking up. I do believe they are they're tied up and presently guarded. And so our party can uh, with everyone present, I'm assuming, go to the talk The big one with is waking. The big one. Ugly <laughs> orc. Uh, Winston, do you want to do the uh, the questioning? Sure, I'll start us off with some questions. All right. Well, so I imagine we're all standing in front of a tied-up Garnasha. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
as Garnasha st uh, stirs, I'll say, uh, hello again, Garnasha. She rouses. Her one good eye opens and sort of fixes on you. I'm still here. Yes, we decided to keep you alive. Uh, behold the mercy of Dracus. Mm. And that's despite your trickery, if I remember right. You challenged Elaine to a one-on-one, -on -one, and that didn't happen. <laughs> she chuckles to herself. Little did you know, Elaine could actually do a one-on-30. I seem to have been outmatched. But you robbed me of my good death. Hmm. Well, would we be able to negotiate so that you would be able to get your good death? Yes, absolutely. Excellent. What can you tell us about Fort Ganassus? <laughs> I've never heard of it. Really? My eyes now. What is Fort Canassus? Uh, that that um, fort that the other orcs are out in the forest looking for. Kachuma. Oh, Kachuma, rather. Ah. I'll tell you, young human, these lands risen from the sea are ancient beyond belief. Mm hmm. The fort beyond the mountains is old, older than time. It crumbles. It needs to shut its door. You know, those old houses can get very drafty. It's a pain. Eating that in winter? Mm. Magical hair dryers. Um, <laughs> it's an ancient place, far older than this land itself. And what awaits there will surely bring you doom. Mm, doom. I look at the other two. Uh, well, it seems like doom is on our menu. What doom? Why? Why is there doom? My brethren wait for you there. How many of them? The orc, her one eye settling on you, says with a confident grin uh, there's but 50 of my brethren yet Geraldine and her bodyguards will make short work of you just like you and your clan made short work of us <sighs> fate had different plans for me yes that's what they all tell themselves Um, I'll speak up and I'll say, you did have a choice, you know. You chose to accompany these people who are not your brethren and fight for them. And I would make that choice again and again a thousand times over. Then you truly are a poor leader and responsible for your own demise here. Don't blame your less honorable death on me. She strains so against her restraints, but she's at like, you know, zero HP or like half an HP. So the restraint, the, the, the effort against the ropes is weak and there's no way she's gonna succeed, but your taunts, you can see, uh, you know, hit her to her core and there's no suppression of emotion or feelings. She, she, stretches out her chest. She pulls against the, the ropes. How dare you? Now, now, Elaine, I think that being loyal to one's end is very noble. Uh, the brethren that you have, 
Do they do magic? The magic? rest of my people do not practice the arcane or divine arts. We are soldiers. We have axes and spears and hammers, armor. We'll rip you limb from limb, little halfling. We'll I'm suck the marrow you. from your toes. We'll break your neck and slurp from your skull. There's only one of us that's tied up I, right now. I'll give a tiny chuckle. That is, that is probably the most ridiculous thing I've heard all day. You'll make me into soup. You'll season me with rosemary. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm so scared. Well, what uh, else do we need from her? Uh, have you found anything interesting in Fort Cop Schumann yet? A, a, a fortress older than the land it's built upon? Is that well, not fascinating? Items in it, I should ask specifically. <laughs> what about a Vorpal sword? Vorpal? What's a Vorpal sword? It's a mystery. It's a lie. It doesn't exist. Old You've story is all this time. Have you purple. seen it? Have you heard of it? Mm, Mark Derak wrote of it to me. What does it do? It seeks the neck of its prey and quickly slices it with but a single blow. Mm. Guaranteed to kill your opponent. Well. Impressive. Is there anything else that you know of other than the fort that might be of interest? Of amazing discoveries on this little island? It's amazing how weak the people are, how easily cowed your brethren may be. How you turn on one another. How you bow and scrape for mercy. Isn't that what you're doing? No, it is not, is it? Aren't they begging for our mercy to kill them and turning against their brethren by telling us all this information? Because it won't help you. I could tell no. you everything and it would not matter. Mokhtarak and Geraldine will make short work of you. All right. We'll try. Then tell me this. <clears throat> Why do people who are, who essentially only care about their own brethren, why would they agree to join another army they do not care about whatsoever? I don't understand. Well, you grouped up with the humans, yeah? There's a human wizard there. There's an entire mm -hmm. army of Arasi on the side of the mountain. You guys are here alone in your fort. There's only, there was only orcs, some dogs, some goblins, no humans here or nothing like that. But still your leader is not an orc, yeah? You don't seem, you know, all the taunts and, and all that aside, you don't seem like somebody who easily bows to another race who's not an orc. Help me understand that. I follow strength first. And wizard second. Orcs. My people are a strong race. We live for the glory. We live to see our enemies' bones broken before us. And if humans 
wish to play the logistics, wish to play the caretakers, the ox cart drivers, and leave all the glory of war to me? That is a trade I will gladly take. No. Now you're going to have to, you're going to have to give me a lot of slack here because boy, is this a big, big ask. But don't you think that our two nations might possibly not have a conflict here? Why would you choose that route when we could be in conflict? When we could conquer you? We could drive your families from their homes, take your lands, eat your children, the way I see it is that you're not fulfilling your duty if you pursue that path. It seems like your leader wants to explore this fort more. So what if, uh, and it seems like going through your reports here, you don't really have uh, plans on long-term being here. So why don't we set you on your way? Maybe we even help you out in this fort. We all leave happy. Are you suggesting that after you slaughtered 20 of my closest kin, that you would set me free and we would all live happily ever after, sewing headbands of flowers, braiding each other's hairs? Perhaps not that friendly. However, I don't see any reason why we can't come to a negotiated peace. What do you want? Well... If it were up to me, I would want your entire contingent off of this island with whatever findings you came here to find, perhaps. That Vorpal sword sounds rather nice, but it's a small price to pay for the price of peace. I look at Elaine to make sure that I'm not promising something I can't really give. Just so I understand correctly, are you suggesting they take all their stuff and if they have a Vorpus sword, they take that as well and just leave the island behind? Yeah. But they're evil and they've come to, and they've, they're against the Empire and we have to kill them because they're evil. It doesn't sound too evil to me. It sounds to me like they're an adventuring party who went to come to this oh, jungle. to this. Evil. It was secondary to my knowledge also you just what happens the good what? conquering you know also, live in a also, conquering live remember, in a slave driving that's just what happened if i remember my history <laughs> correctly it is possible that they um they took over from even worse people that that is what the traitor um what was his name lord Campbell, the traitor Campbell said. Mm -hmm. One could say that it's by, you would imagine that orcs might just ravage the entire populace. They didn't kill everyone. Instead, they chose to leave them alive. One might say that that's an act of goodwill. Mm. No, I like the way you think. That we own, they've disrespected it and they think that our la our country, our, our, our empire, won't strike back. That we're just gonna let them come here, fuck over our villages, and then go home with all of their findings and plunder, and live happily ever after. When, if they like what they found here, you think that they're not gonna whoop, paper right back. Whoop, that's gonna be their ship. Whoop, on their way back here with more people. Well, they didn't know that uh, they didn't necessarily know this place was under the protection of Dracus. Oh, they did. We follow strength. <laughs> you of the Star Crest, you who have bested me in war, I humbly submit myself to be your aid, your axe in battle. Put me in charge of your minions, and together, we shall conquer this land from the agents across the sea. What do you mean together? Aren't you going to run back to your people on the other side of the mountain? Wasn't that the plan? Because we're weak. 
You defeated me. Yes. me the soup. Unquestionably defeated me in combat. You had that chance to follow me earlier. Now you're just being a snake. I'm not an idiot. Is there some sort of skill to see whether or not this orc is actually telling the truth here? To decide. Oh. Well, they Elaine can be... challenged them to a one on one. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, yeah, come inside. They prove mm -hmm. themselves to be someone that doesn't value strength. Value snakery because if they valued simple strength, they would have taken that one on one and they would have proven it or at least tried to have proven it, but they didn't. They're a little slippery freaking snake. Oh, that's a pretty good point. You that's could, my insight check. You could make a charisma check to see if you think they're lying, but you would have to take your results and sort of, you know, if you roll a 24, um, you will. I'll give you an answer and you'll have to decide if they might have possibly rolled higher than your roll or not. Because if they roll like a 30 to lie to you and you roll a 24 to check their lie, then you will have believed the lie. You know, it's an opposed check, but you won't know what they've rolled. Um, so that that's how we could do a, a, a trustworthy truthiness check. Sure. Out of pure curiosity, I will use my skills to deduce whether or not, um, you know, she's telling the truth. Not and Vincent slowly. is a very charismatic man, if I remember yeah. correctly. Mm -hmm. And j even if I think she's telling the truth, you know, we don't necessarily go down that path. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you roll a 28. You get the distinct impression. Um, you get the distinct impression that this orc will follow the strongest person, and that might be Elaine, up until a point at which a stronger person arrives and they might follow that one instead. Uh, there's not a ton of loyalty here. There's uh, I mean, that could work in your favor or not. You know, there's not a ton of loyalty here. Yeah, I'll ask uh, York, what do you think of all your goblin friends here, by the way? Friends? You mean the dirty slaves that clean our pots and pans? The lowest of the low? The foul creatures? Whose I'm heads I would like not shrink from? Ugh. Ah, I see. They shine boots with their tongues, and that's as good as they're useful for. Okay, um... That's... I lean back in my chair a little bit across my arms, and I'm waiting for Vincent. I'm just patiently watching him struggling, you know? I'm not smirking or anything. I respect the effort he's putting in, but right now, like, Elaine's mind has not been changed whatsoever. But she's, you know, she gives him the space. She's like, all right. Yeah, I turn to Elaine, uh... That's about all that I had for her. Um, anything, shall we confer? Anything you want to ask? If this was a different orc, I might have different questions for them. But sometimes we are very much set in our ways and a simple talk is not going to change anything. We I can didn't. ask them about the schedule or routine in case that makes any difference for our approach to the castle. I'm not sure I would trust her enough to actually tell the truth about that. Yeah, she might not know also. and That's true. Unless you wanted to use your spell on that, I would not be confident in the answer. Yep. I think that's about all. Well then. Uh, I, I confer with the, just the two of you. Uh, I think the least we can do is give her a good death for her cooperation, right? Yes, can I do it? What do you mean by a good death? Slit her throat. Yeah, make it clean, I suppose. I think that's what she would want. Turned her into a soup like she said she'd do to me. 
I don't no. take, Vincent, I don't take pleasure in killing people. I just want right. to make that very clear. It happens more often than maybe I would like. But it's I, not because I feel satisfaction in doing so. I wouldn't make her suffer no matter what. Of course, sometimes it's just a sad fact of life that people have to kill each other because they believe differently. I'll put a, I'll put a hand on his shoulder and say, Vincent, you have done tremendous work today and you have tried very hard and this orc might not appreciate that but I think in this world it means something to try and change people and to try out different options and just because in the end we have to revert to the old things we knew from the beginning doesn't mean it's not worth trying and you save those Ten goblins in this keep, and to them that means the world. And if we lose this one orc, you've still done some good. I, I nod and I ask, do you think that there is no chance for our two nations to get through this incident peaceably? I think that it is possible to let the main force leave if they were to choose so. Who would we talk to? That's the question. Well, it seems like this Gerald is a human wizard, from my information. Geraldine? Oh, uh, Geraldine, yes. Um, I would have to check my notes on that. I will think about it. <laughs> the whole time that they're talking, I'm just, like, sharpening my blades on each other, getting ready to kill this orc. <laughs> Can we use our, um information memory to remember if Geraldine Silverworth I have this name down is like a wizard of theirs yes a human um, wizard yeah the entire events of our campaign thus far have fallen into a 24 hour period of time so while us humans in the real world may not remember things that were said three weeks ago um, your characters heard these things but hours ago uh, Geraldine Silverworth is a black robed human wizard but it says in my notes that their name is Jaden, and last time they were a guy. So either I misheard the name. It uh, says Jaden here. Is it Geraldine? It's Geraldine. I, as I was going through my notes last night, <laughs> I noticed that uh, the name was spelled in different places, and the character oh, yeah. was written as a male and as a female in different places. Oh. And so okay, I just... just... Just making sure we're not going crazy. So we have... <laughs> You know, maybe they switch. You know, maybe they're sometimes depending you know, on the mood. Yeah. So this is this is we're sticking with Geraldine Silverworth, the wizard. Okay. Because yes. I was like, it was a dude last time, and his name was not Geraldine. Okay. Yeah, I did it, have it marked down as Gerald question mark. Yes. It was, it was Geraldine, but with a J instead of a G, and then there some places had human female, and some places had human male, and I got confused, and so I. We we consolidated. Um, I'll say to Vincent, well, we're not at war with that nation. That is correct, Neil. Right at this point, we are not. <laughs> you well, uh, uh, not officially, but you did just fight and kill like twenty of their people. So I don't know yeah, if that is going to. Before... Okay, yeah. Before First of that, all, that no. and they sent, and they also sent like. You know, there's this weird death card thing going on that might be mildly related yeah, that yeah, Elaine yeah. has also investigated. And... Yeah, I think they attacked us first, if I remember right, too. We were yeah. traveling down the road, and they attacked us. That's I mean, they, true. They invaded After this island and killed, killed them. two of them in that house. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> they tried to attack us first. Well, actually, they did, kind of. They would the problem us. is, in times of war, where things are so very unclear, um, if somebody comes and takes your place that clearly has a flag on top of it, no matter how poorly you run that place, is it's still your place. And, well, if you know. it's especially poorly run, you know, I could see something to be said there. Sometimes peace takes a very big leap of faith, and perhaps this is that leap of faith moment that we need. If we With keep orcs. this orc alive, that might be a good show of faith that we could 
be reasoned with and let them all go. Yeah, or that we're weak and afraid of taking measures into our own hands. Exactly. You know, because we don't have enough people to kill these orcs on the other <clears throat> side of the mountain. And it's not weakness. Because we're afraid the of the war needs coming to be into seen our as direction. strong. Not as little pansies that feel bad for an orc. Oh, a guy. No. It Him isn't our weakness. land. Enslaved our people. Our land. Do you get her to think our empire is a bunch of little pansies? It isn't weakness to have to have compassion and to uh, seek a diplomatic approach. That is true, but some people who have compassion and seek a diplomatic approach are pansies. They're not mutually exclusive. Imagine if word gets out that let's see, this place was mystery, right? Or what was this nation? Drakus, you're Drakus. No, the their side. Oh. Solemn, you mean solemn? Yeah. yeah. Uh, imagine if we, if this incident were to cause a war between Drakus and Solemn, that would be our fault, and we could be seen as the aggressor in that case. Uh, instead, maybe we can provide closer ties between our two nations uh, by letting this very tense situation go peaceably. But they fucked us. So they will let go by us killing them and then forgiving us for doing that. We don't forgive them for walking over us. The world would be a very dark place indeed if every incident always escalated to complete bloodshed. Yes, but we're part of the Ross Empire. We conquer. We lose wars. If we went into a war, we'd win it. We'd gain land. We'd conquer right wouldn't our land be more secured if we just it sounds like they're going to leave this island if we perhaps don't cause an incident here they'll leave the island what is so you suggest we just clear out the village and just don't make any contact to that fort on the other side i of think the mountain. we could contact geraldine see if she's someone who can be reasoned with she sees our act of goodwill. We left her commander here alive, despite our earlier misunderstanding. She knows that orcs get into battle. You know, uh, we were in the right to attack this fort because they were taking over our city. But now that we've learned more, we're willing to negotiate with them. We're willing to let them go. What if, if this peace treaty doesn't work out, we kill everyone in the castle, just bear with me. They send another ship. We kill them all. Ship never returns. They think the seas are treacherous. They don't come back. Not our fault. It was the ocean. That sounds... That sounds very evil. Evil? It was the people. ocean. <laughs> right. That is a very cunning plan. <clears throat> Crumb. Thank you. Unfortunately, Hello. I think if they really wish to send more ships, they probably might have more. I doubt this is the only island they send a ship to to explore. It's probably something they do on a bigger scale. I think they have multiple ships sending them to multiple locations, trying to find places where they can settle or where they can gather materials from for whatever reason they might need those. Yeah, it might be something similar to what Trekkis were to do if our ship were, if we were to never show up, they probably wouldn't just leave the island for gone. They'd send more ships and then, you know, all of a sudden we have a war on our hands. We leave one survivor on a ship, we send them back, but a stupid one who's weak that we've tortured, and they say, ah, the, the ocean, it was so treacherous, everyone died but me. Oh boy. They've been here for a long time, and the ship is supposed to come in two weeks, so they know that you can make land here safely for a while. They will <laughs> think it was just a single accident, you know. Um, I find this highly risky, Vincent. Um, you have no experience in negotiation, like negotiations with another nation whatsoever. You are going on your good conscience. Um, 
We do it's... not know these people at all, and everything we've seen from them so far is that they are murderers and that they enslave people that are here, and that they do not really care about talking, and they just care about power. I didn't see any indicators that these people tried to, you know, they didn't peacefully take over. They didn't try to convince people to join them. They just pushed them. Well, I see a lot of indicators. Uh, first of all, Outpost Santa Barbara still stands and it isn't in flame. Um, the people yeah, there if, aren't if in Dra chains. If Drakus was so bad to them, it would have been easy to simply take over and say you have to pay us tax or toll or whatever, but instead they posted orcs there and threatened people. You know, they had a chance to take over as legitimate <laughs> rulers if they wanted to, and they decided that that is not the path they want to take. They wanted to enslave them instead. That doesn't show me their goodwill in that in that sense. You know. Well, according to these, they could have been the great heroes taken over and being in charge, and they did not want that because they didn't care about these people. That's they just true. On a on a scale of you know completely justified conquering and. Uh, burning down the entire outpost. It's somewhere in the middle. Uh, but the point is this. I don't think diplomacy is completely off the table. Um, and who knows? This entire conflict might be greater than any of us. If we just charge into that fort with the only plan, if the only solution is to kill them all, and then to kill their next ship, uh, and then to kill all other ships that try to come here, who knows, that may embroil Drakus in a war. And while I am no diplomat, uh, it's it seems likely that that wizard on their side is not a diplomat as well. It sounds like an adventuring crew. Uh, not unlike us, honestly. Perhaps the threat of war will prevent them from escalating further. In Good, order I to agree. Yes, we might have a diplomatic path out. Yes, perhaps. But in order for us to establish that we run this, we might have to get our hands a little dirty or be, be willing to. And we've done that. We've cleared out this fort's orcs. I think there is mm. very little t cost to tying, to keeping this uh, orc in a prison cell somewhere. Uh, dragging her out at some point oh, yes. and showing her to a liaison when we begin our talks that we do have a prisoner we kept her alive um, oh, and we're, you, we don't just I'm, kill everyone i'm happy to try that it's not going to work but that means we can start off nice vincent it warms my heart and i mean that with no irony that you believe that keeping people like her or me alive is a display worth of trust. Hasn't it been amazing how forthcoming she has been? I believe that she is willing to even fight with us. Because she has no loyalty. She has no, no goal, no heart. For us, we are loyal to the Empire. I would not break under She was ready to name. die here, and yet she still... She's here. She wants to go see whatever demon they worship. Here's, here's the thing, okay? I do not care about this orc. I don't care whether she lives or dies. She's had her life. She's failed as a leader, and she's had a purpose, and this is where the purpose ends. She's not going to serve under me. If you would like to keep her alive as, um, you know... I don't know, as a show of goodwill, then that is fine. She's not going to fight under me. She's course, not going understood. to sleep in my quarters, and I will never speak to her. Okay? Sounds good to me. He's running we'll get a the jail cell How long does it take to get... How long does it take to get our ship back to our homeland and here again, if we were to order them to go? Like, if we took the, the tiny... Um, what is it? Yard back over to the islands and send them. Um, send our boat back and it came here that again. That is a Brooks great Hunter. question. Let me do some quick measuring. Um, I think. Oh god, we've got to travel like 800 mile. Eight? 800? 800 miles vertically and like 600 miles horizontally plus a little bit of maneuvering um, 
hundred square. Uh, yeah. So a couple, like a to get back to Drekus, and then do whatever you need doing there, and then come back to Ethos is probably going to take you a couple months. Maybe like a month in each direction. Probably a less. Couple but months. You, I was a ship ride here. Probably less. Like in theory, it could be done in two or three weeks. But with the weather and with how you know nothing always goes according to plan, it's probably like three weeks each direction. And if things go wrong, maybe a little longer. And then they're going to need time once they get there to offload, sort things out, create whatever plans, create whatever infrastructure, reload, and come back. So you would expect. If you sent a message home now, you might get a good response in two to three months. It could be faster if everything goes really, really well. Two months. Two to three months. Depends yeah. on how good the bureaucracy rolls. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Yeah, you're kind of out here on your own. All right. Um, I kind of expected to get this orc out of our memory quickly, but it seems like we not. Uh, we might not. What was this orc well, name again? It's so your I can fault. I know. My bad. It's your fault. What's this orc's name again? So I can write it down. Uh, Ganasha. Garnasha. Oh, I see. Go. That's why. Memory. Yeah, that's why I called it Fort Garnasha or something. You got the names mixed up. <laughs> oh, so you're just trying to flatter. You're like, oh, I thought the fort was named yeah. after you because you're such a great hero. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, I. Conc uh, concluding words on this huddle. So, will we keep this orc alive as a prisoner then? Up to lane. Fine. Okay. You know. Let's just hope they're also not great diplomats. <clears throat> you know. Let's let's just go with that. I feel let's hope that they are great diplomats because a great diplomat would realize that this is a winning solution for both nations. We don't have enough people to fight those. What? Are, how many are left? Fifty orcs with a wizard and a cler possibly a cleric on the other side. Our troops are too small to do that, and we also still have to walk at least a little way through the jungle of death to that ancient fort, to whatever godly powers are there. Um, I think we might be well matched. Um, we took out this fort of, what was it, 20-ish orcs? 20-ish with no casualties, which means 50-ish orcs and you know their leaders might be closer than you'd think. How do we set up a talk with these people on the other side of the mountain? Excellent question. Uh, the two things that I can think of immediately would be one, we can use our friendly noble, forgot his name. Campbell? Yes, yeah, Campbell. Lord Campbell. Lord Campbell can become a messenger. Uh, I think he's hey. someone that's recognizable. Um, that is probably a the best messenger that I can think of, in fact. Yeah, well, we send a goblin. Comes on. That is the second thing that I thought of. I agree with that one. But I think Campbell would be able to relay the message better. But what if they killed him? Killed Campbell? Yes. He had us in our estate, in his estate. The the staunch ally who's helped us every part of the way. What if but... they killed Campbell? Oh, I see. But um, you send him with the message, and they say, Oh, yes, we send people to your household to check if you had these people. And you did. So fuck you and your message. Now you're dead. I'd rather send a goblin. Sounds like these two groups are, you know, very separate groups. And I think this fort was the one who talked to Campbell in the first place. The group that's inside in Kachuma uh, probably knows... You know, very little about what happened here. Okay, it's a risk on Lord Campbell's life, and it could be done by a goblin. 
Could be, but Campbell would, you know, Campbell's pretty. He has an air of authority. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we take our first break right here? When we come back on the other side of a break, we'll have our final decision and we'll see where the story takes us. Catch you on the other side of our break. Bye bye. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rise of Drekus, Chapter 2, Episode 4. So, what are we doing with the orc? Are we, are we killing the orc, or are we keeping the orc? We'll keep him prisoner. Excellent. Keeping him as a pet. Excellent. What about the town? That's just, you know, less than a mile away. Yeah, I'm gonna... I think we have to go over there, but I'm in no fighting shape right now mm -hmm. well, there shouldn't be any fighting fighters there but i'll first ask this work i i guess um we're going we're ready to tell her the good news right you can tell her whatever you want vincent i'm not going to talk to her okay i will go back to her and say i have some good news for you We've decided that you might just be able to make it out alive so that you can continue fighting. Uh, we appreciate your strong warrior's spirit. Uh, we plan to negotiate with your people. <laughs> and what will you ask of them? What will you promise? Uh, we promise to let them leave the island with what they have found. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? The extent of your peace is that you surrender. I'm happy Not... to take your surrender right here and right now. I didn't see anything about us surrendering. What's important to us is the outpost. What's important to your people seems to be whatever is in that fort. Uh, our two interests don't collide. Are you sure? You do not think that we will come back? This land, this new land that is filled with riches and wonder? You think once discovered, we will simply walk away? what i'm saying i don't think that your nation will necessarily decide to get into a war with our nation uh we'll take this as a very small minor out you know a uh, rogue skirmish that occurred and now both nations will know that drakus has a rightful claim to this land a very diplomatic approach isn't it though Mm. Well, I'm ready to be set free now. Uh, we've decided to keep you prisoner in the meantime. But I thought you said you admired my strength. You were going to keep me as a warrior and ally. Yes, uh, and we plan to let you go as soon as we've negotiated this peace. <sighs> Settles into her chains and closes her one good eye. And drifts back to sleep. By the way, are there any more of your orcs in town? Or did they all get called back to this fort? I don't know. I've been unconscious for I have no idea how long. You didn't send any out on that day because you had everyone defend here or something, did you? Who can remember? I was hit on the head very hard. Do you have any... A uh, symbol of authority here so that if we were to meet any of your orcs, we could not slay them and tell them that, tell them to come back here to join you. You wish my aid in luring yes. my people into another ambush. To become prisoners instead of dying, yes. They would rather die than be prisoners, and I would not deprive them of a good death. 
I see. Okay. All right. Uh, we're Be done off here. with you, in man. Mm hmm. Good talk. Good talk. Now she settles into her chains and closes her eyes. Um, and here we are in the beautiful uh, live oak forest at the edge of the ocean. It is June 20. July. June 20, oh. July. Classic date. Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> it, it used to be July 27th, so I don't think it's no, June. No, 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 no. no. It, was, it was June 27th. Actually, it was July 20... It says July 27th, then it was June 28th. So, who knows, really. Times, it, times of leading concept. The start date clearly says June 27th, 1517, Jexel yeah. Apogee. Um, <laughs> and that was what, June 28th still, right? Yes, I think June so. 28th. Tomorrow will be July 1st. Mm. We're using 28 Excellent. day months. Mark is set in the sky. Absolutely. Um, um, not that I know anything about that, but you know. So I think we need to check on the villagers. I am very hurt. Krem is very hurt. Does anybody want to stay back or do we want to go and go to town together? I'm pretty sure Willa can hold down this place by herself for now. Yes, and I'm sure we can handle either four or eight orcs if they are there. Yeah, I mean, yes, it could be more than four or eight, though. Probably not. Well, we will see. Off we go. Um, yes, I think we're taking the bodyguard. I'm also taking two bowmen, just okay. in case, because we're not very ranged uh, savvy. Mm. Are there any horses in this fort, Neil? There are no horses in this fort. There were three wargs, uh, but they were killed. I would like to take Lord Campbell with us. Okay, he's not here, you'll he? have to. Oh. Well, he's, he's a mile well, back are. that way, they, right? Yeah, we'll pick him oh, right. up on our way okay. back, right? Yeah. And we'll tell the um, other folk that it's safe to go back to the mansion for now. Great. We can go Do you pick think up that Lord. It's safe for me to scout ahead um, when we get closer to the town. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, Krim. I think you can do that. You can gear up Lord Campbell, bring him back to the keep. Um, then pick up, you know, deliver whoever people would need to go wherever, grab your soldiers and head into the town of Santa Barbara in the slough, um, just just a half mile away. You head down the hill and you can see the red tile roofs of the village, the town. You can see the dock that sticks out into the lagoon, the slough. Uh, there's a fountain with a group of dolphins, a trio of dolphins on it. Um, palm trees, there's warm weather. I mean, it's the middle of summer, and so actually it's foggy in the mornings, but I think it's afternoon by now, so the the fog has burned off, and it's a very pleasant, you know, 78, 80-degree weather um, as you walk into town with arms and armor and bowmen and soldiers. Um, We're just two bowmen. We're like, how many people are we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're taking. Yeah. Um, it's. I thought it was. It's six, just but... us. It's Willa who keeps oh, the well. fort with the soldiers. We're a very small group. It's the three of you plus Trump's bodyguard plus Lord two Campbell. Bowmen? Oh, and Campbell, yeah. Five, six, seven, and yeah, two, seven. and two. Yeah, it's only seven people. All right. Um, so we're not like waving flags and blaring national anthems and marching in a column. We're we're just like walking into town, like like seven randos. We're walking into town, or okay. rather, we're walking close to town. So then Crumb can have a look because she wanted to scout it. All right, Crumb. Well, you can head on in. Um, and tell me about your approach. Is this like you're sneaking into town, hiding from bush to bush, peering over fences, crawling under porches, or are you just like finding the road and walking on in? What's well, what's your you vibe? said that there had been halflings in this town before. Yep. So I'm just gonna go in. Like I live here. I was out collecting something. 
cool. And I, you know, I have some brass in my arms. Just, you know, I, I belong here. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking around like that. Yeah. Well, you can walk on into town and it's a functioning town. Um, there's people hanging out in the streets and chatting. There's business being done. There's, there's sales happening. There's clothing being dried. There's, mm. um, you know, shoes being washed. All the normal functions of town. And there seems to be a lot of excitement in the air. Um, you know, people are excitedly chatting with one another. And how do we, how do we, let me make a roll here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you can see that as you're walking into town, you're not entirely unnoticed, right? This is a very small town, and there's not a ton of halflings here. There's definitely halflings, but there's not a ton. And there's not been a lot of travel with the mainland in a long time. And so you're getting the impression that the the small town vibe has people looking at you being like, I don't recognize that halfling. Is this a person in our village that I've never met? Well, who is this well, person? Question. And you're kind of getting this this vibe of yeah. like curiosity. Cool. Uh, when people are talking really excitedly, can I use my reading lips proficiency to see what they're chatting excitedly about? I do believe that's exactly what the reading lips proficiency does, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, why don't you make me a uh, read lips proficiency check? I did. Oh, I think. Yes, you did. And you succeeded on top of that. Uh, let me make sure that I understand how it works just by reading a read lips. Mm. I think it's just like how some people are able to look at people's mouths. People that have some hearing loss and stuff. Yeah. You just get really good at like... If the check is successful, 70% of the conversation is understood. Since certain sounds are impossible to differentiate, the understanding of lip-reading conversation is never better than 70%. Yeah, but 70% is enough to get the gist of what's happening. Um, Apparently, earlier today, uh, an orc ran through the town and grabbed the other orcs that were in town, and they all fled northward. And everyone is hurriedly and excitedly talking about what would cause all the orcs to flee? And they're in the process what? of speculation. Everyone's favorite activity. <clears throat> Very nice. Uh, is there? Does someone look friendly around me? Anyone friendly? Oh yeah, looking? there's lots of friendly looking people. Heard the nor? Heard, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Hello. Hi. I heard the or- orcs fled northward today. Hi. Yeah, all of them. None of them are here anymore. Well, I don't know about the fort, but the ones in town. None of them are here. What, what was your name again? Oh, I'm just a halfling, you know? Crumb. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just a human. Yeah, it's Crumb. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to run off to my party. Okay. <laughs> okay, awesome. Guys, they all fled north. What, the entire village? That's terrible. Why would they all no, go to... That... <laughs> <laughs> not the village, not the village. No, they're all happy there. They're all happy and safe and sound and chattering happily, happily, happily chattering. Uh, the orcs this morning went north. Right. Must have been the one that, you know, fled from the fort, informed them, and they took off. Yes. Well, that's great news. Campbell, I guess it's time for an announcement. Where would we... Where would we hold one? The marketplace? The fountain? Where yep. do you people hold speeches if ever? Uh, anyhow. I would do it in the uh, the square near the docks by the fountain. Fantastic. Then you will do it exactly there. What, what do you want me to say? Well, you're in charge, right? Of this wonderful town. Uh-huh. You can say that so... Drakus has come to protect and retake Santa Outpost Santa Barbara. And um, to right the wrongs that, is ha- that have happened before? Okay. Leave it to me. I've got this. And, uh... Wonderful. 
Lord Campbell will- I'll be right by your side just in case. <laughs> you mean you're there to support me, right? Of course. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> I don't know why. Sometimes you scare me. <laughs> um, and It's not intentional. It comes with the position. Yes, if you uh, would like, I will walk up with you. Don't you want to join the stage, Link? Oh, I will join the stage, but I'm I'm better standing in the back with people looking at me, you know? Sometimes it's better if people have an impression than if you actually talk to them. Great. Well, it sounds like we can all join... Uh, we can all join the announcement stage. Uh, Crumb, would you care to maybe... Make your way through the crowd and gather a few opinions as the speech is going oh, on. See most what definitely. The, have a, what do they say, vibe check, you know. Oh, yes. Very I'm good. I'm small, yeah. That is wonderful. Mm. What check would that be? Um, That's going to be... Ooh, that's a great question. Probably charisma, right? Yeah, because you're you're just trying to read the vibe of the area, so that's going to be a charisma check, for certain. Not too good at charisma, well, but let's that's hold okay. Let, let's hear the speech first, okay. and, then, and then we can make our dice rolls. Okay. Are you ready to give your, your own people your own speech? The odds going to be good. Awesome. <laughs> you have done this. You have made the DM interact with himself. I feel a little bit sorry, but also kind of not. So if people start booing you, that's literally just you yeah, doing your that's own. You. <laughs> yeah. 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 You suck. Put this you... guy on stage. Why is he in charge? It's going to be amazing. You know, if you wanted to take credit, Elaine, you could do the speech. This might be good practice for you as a noble. Well, of course it could be, but if we want these people to believe that Campbell is actually in charge, then he needs to be the one delivering the message. Otherwise, he's just a farce. And I have decided to give him a chance when it comes to that. Awesome. So take it as a sign of goodwill on my part. Well, we're putting our faith in you, Campbell. Leave it to me. I've been practicing for this for years now. <clears throat> He'll get up onto this sort of balcony area. It's just a raised platform. Um, there's a, a bar back here and there's a fishmonger over here. Um, and there's, you know, the harbor master and the warehouse and the traders and like a, a pottery studio and some grocers, you know, it's, it's the downtown section. There's people about, and there's some new folks coming in with arms and armor that don't look like the orcs and they're not flying these flags of ferocity. And, and there's Lord Campbell and there's a, some archers there that look like they're wearing Dracissian uniforms and. There's some curiosity, and so as Lord Campbell gets to the top of the, the boardwalk and puts his hands in the air and says, uh, Good people of Santa Barbara, hear ye, hear ye, gather round, take a moment, go into local shops, go into local houses, gather the people. I will, I will give you a speech in ten minutes. Gather friend and foe alike for this that I have to tell you will be life-changing. And he'll mm. stand by and wait for an appropriate crowd to gather. Um, and he'll make sure all the folks from it, inside the Sand Shark come on down to the, the lower area where they can properly be received. It's too big. There we go. And then he waits. Finally. When the crowd has gathered, he'll uh, raise his hands for silence and project his voice out over the open plaza. Good people of Santa Barbara, I am Lord Campbell, your newly appointed noble. I know my face may not be recognizable to all of you and I wear no crown or position of statue to, or rank, um, but you all are aware I have been appointed by by those who have brought us bloodshed and violence to oversee the town. And today, 
in those duties, I am proud to bring us good news. Behind me, you will see Lady Pentelin, the great leader of warriors from Drakus, who has brought with her soldiers, mages, assassins, here to this land to rid us of our invaders, to rid us of the tusked orcs, to rid us of the black Vs of Varasi and set us free once more. From shadows, we shall soon walk into light. And it is Lady Pentelin, yes, that Lady Pentelin, who will lead us to our, back, back into the fold of our original hometown. It's been a hard many years here. We've suffered the indignities of terrible, heartless, ruthless rulers. And I, wildly unqualified to lead you, now stand before you, telling you that you have a new appointed leader. One who will hopefully be less power hungry and less mad and less bloodthirsty than those who have come before. Um, as you have all heard, the, the orcs have been driven from the fortress. The lands are now free, uh, but the work is not done. Lady Pentelin and her close advisors, uh, the, the wizard Vincent, the, he starts looking in the crowd, um, Lady, no. Lady Crumpet somewhere is around here. Um, and, oh, uh, Vorden, the warrior and uh, Willa, who, who is not here with us, the archer, um, shall <laughs> he kind of looks across the crowd, not like clearly having never given a speech like this in his life. Uh, will 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 change our fortunes? I ask each of you to recognize their leadership and follow them as peacefully and as lawfully as you can. And one day soon, we shall know the pride of the Drakissian flag once again flying over our houses and shall once again know full stomachs uh, without the fear of, of bloodshed or impending thievery, murder, or slavery. Uh, and so please, local town, give a, a round of applause and a warm welcome to our latest group of liberators and there's some like well hold on we should get we should give the lord a charisma check well i i applaud the oh, lord's uh, wow that's pretty charisma. good he's great wow very good look at him go <clears throat> here here do i have to do a charisma check to yes. see if people are uh, you know what, <laughs> Pichachu? It's not great. The problem is Fuck. that you're listening to the speech and you like the speech and you're there applauding and then you go up to talk to the others and then you realize that your job was not to listen to the speech but to listen to the people and you completely blew your job and, and you were just so enraptured by what was an amazing, if I may say so myself, an amazing <laughs> uh, yeah. little lecture. And you I just... liked the line about walking through the shadow into the light. Great job, Campbell. Yeah, I'm in the crowd and I'm like, fuck, fuck. I wasn't paying attention. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be like, I thought it was great. It was mm -hmm. for great. Yeah. All right. I'm just assuming it's great because that's what I thought it was. Elaine nods, pleased with the outcome of this. All right. I'll slip I back onto it's... stage and I'll go up to Elaine and I'll whisper, I'll go, it was received very well, my lady. All right, was it? Well, that is a great, great relief. I guess how, it tr how you only know truly how it was received in the evenings after the, uh, the first beer has been drunk, you know? Mm. Yes. Are we rolling initiative already, Neil? It was just getting <laughs> cozy. Don't what worry is about it. It's... It's, oh my god, am I I'm, getting stabbed in the back? I'm filling out Lord okay. Campbell's character sheet. That's his role for uh, <laughs> handedness and sexual orientation. 
Oh, he's left. Is he left-handed? Oh. Damn. No, he's right-handed. Wait, what's oh, a sexual a orientation? Nine. What's a nine out of ten? Uh, that makes but him he... bisexual. He's very oh, sexual. Wait. Nine so out of ten. What do you have to? <laughs> what do you have to roll to be like heterosexual, gay, bi? Uh, eighty percent heterosexual, ten percent bisexual, ten percent gay, is the the usual route that I go, and then. 90, 80 percent right-handed, ten percent left-handed, ten percent ambidextrous. These are the which is directly linked to your sexuality, if you think about. It. Well, anyways. <laughs> so, if you roll like so a nine, know. then you're by. Yeah, that's that's the rolls that I've been using. But you, for most people, we just I'm declare. Straight. Okay. You, you don't have to just randomize it. You can determine your own character. It's fine. No. You can, okay. I'm you can born be straight. Say. That's all right with me. Oh god. Okay, okay. You guys. Right. Okay. From up here on stage, I see how many people gathered, and I guess uh, how they liked this. It's time for the charm spell, Vincent. Yeah. Get him. You know they're they're there. They're applauding. They're clapping. The idea of new liberators sounds kind of nice, but like, how many times have they heard this speech before? Yep. I, uh, I walk up to Elaine and whisper in her ear, This is your chance. Do you want to say something to them? No. I have nothing more to say. I think it is time to go down and mingle with the crowd and have a look at all the shops and assess the damage that's been done. You know, I think you would have to do some administrative work, actually, Vincent. Sure, as we uh, entered town, I was mostly going to marvel hopefully this is the case does this town look in excellent condition um what do you mean by excellent condition like it looks like a nice little town oh um, yeah it's beautiful yeah yeah that's great i as on our way in i mentioned could could an evil empire really have kept this town looking so good the people look fine. Vincent. Yes? Listen, I am willing to negotiate. What else do you want from me? I don't need to be fire and flame for your idea. I already agreed. Take the win. Got it, okay, got it. No need to stop just selling. Got let it. me do my job got for it. one day. Thank you. All right, let's have a look around town and see. Um... Yeah, well... Uh, as you all come down off the the boardwalk, you are met by a great many locals who have so many questions for you. What's going on back home? What happened in, with the oh. war um, uh, in Arcadia? What's going on there? You know, all sorts of questions about mm -hmm. things that are, are mundane and, and germane. Mm -hmm. Not germane. Mundane. Just mundane. Um... I think maybe it, it makes sense to set up like a regular meeting for this village in general, where we would meet and can like proclaim some news and inform them of our progress and what is going on because now they are part of this operation as well, right? Just so they know what's happening. Yeah. Um, and I will let them know that there's going to be, um, I don't know, is there a print? People don't print in your in your world, do they? Like, there's no newspapers or something no, like that. No, there's no printing press. You do occasionally get woodblock printing, where you carve a piece of wood, and then you put that in ink, and then you can, like, stamp it mm -hmm. multiple times. But it's a slow process to make a woodblock. Mm -hmm. um, so I will let them know that tonight at the... Where is it? What's the tavern? The Sand Shark. We were going to hand out a proclamation and we will update the townsfolk of what's going on with Drekes, what's going on with the war. Um, yeah, just a general, you know, Great. update for anybody who's interested and that when it's done, we're also going to nail it to the uh, front door so people can read it, those who, who have to miss it, you know? Fantastic. Um, because it's might be of some importance. What is our security stance going to be here? Are well, we... we? Do you mean because we have some, we know some traders, or because I don't want to, everybody to know what's going on back home? Uh, well, just like 
I was saying. You've got some soldiers and you've got yourselves. Are we going mm -hmm. to be stationing all the soldiers in the fort or are we going to be setting patrols in the town? Are we sending people out? Like, there's going to be right. a period of activity, you know, right? Um, I don't mm -hmm. know how long it's you're going to need some rest to heal. What are we... I think we will need to set up at least some guards in town, but I don't want them to feel like it's just another patrol that watches everything they're doing, you know? Um... Yeah. Oh. So we set up As a couple... in forcing them to go together from A to B. We're going to set up a couple of guards here, and we're going to have... I'm not sure, can they make it back to... Yeah, they can make it back to the fourth. We've done that. They have done oh, that, so we can yeah. do that as well. The distance from town to fort, if you're casually walking on foot, is like 15 minutes. Yeah, but I think I would make it a point to tell, like, later when we're, I think this, today, we will return to the fort at the end of the day. And then I will tell people that we're going to set, uh, I will inform people here in the evening in the sand shack that there are going to be patrols, but that is just for their safety, because there's still the, you know, the mm -hmm. fortress on the other side of the mountain, we don't want anything to happen to them. Um, and I will uh, very much instill it in the guards that they are, that they have to be very friendly and that they have to be supportive of the people and that yeah. if uh, villagers were to come for them for help that they also need to help and it's not just a we're just guarding this place and we don't care about them right right because we need um, to re-establish some trust cool. i'll give them the helpful tip that when they get invited to the gambling games that they should lose mm. <laughs> who's gonna Are pay you... for that you vincent i paid <laughs> Uh, he's chuckling, but he's like, nah, uh, uh. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were the committed. rich one. Not that committed. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, it's a little, it. you know, friendliness tax. So how many people do we need in this town as guards, then? We have, how, how big are our troops currently? I think two is good enough. Uh, they're mainly here to run to us if they see orcs. How many orcs were watching them before? Yeah, but people are not going to feel safe. You know, the question is, what do you want? Do you just want them to inform us? Or are going, the villager going to be, well, what are they going to do with two, two fucking guards? You know? Well, to, according to that speech there, it seemed like we pretty much beat them off. So uh, it might be seen as a sign of strength or maybe even just, you know, neutral if we only leave two guards here. You know, I, I think it's good to let the village feel like, uh, the town feel like they have their freedom. All right, we're going with four. <laughs> All right. Two spearmen, two bowmen, uh, starting tomorrow, I guess. Um, we've informed people. I, is there any way we can buy some big parchment here in town? I assume there is. There's like a... Yeah, there, there's someone in town who will uh, take some of the swamp reeds and turn them into papyrus scrolls. Okay, and Where's then I'll say, so, and then I'll update them on the situation in Drek, is that the Great Emperor's Week, you know, has succeeded in her war efforts and has, that they have slain the Great Red Men of Scoria right, and that right. finally there's peace coming to blah, 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 you know? blah, blah, everything is blah, well. Blah, 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 all that, all that is important. Um, and then inform them at the regular guard visits and uh, that if anybody still has doubts about, you know, how things are going to move forward, they should feel free to contact Lord Campbell about it. Great. Um, and the other question is, how long are we chilling in town? Is this a, we're waiting for the orcs to come back, and so we're just going to be in a relaxed, maybe not a relaxed state, but uh, in a, a period of rest and healing? Or are we planning on setting out in pretty quick order? Um, we have to heal, but I don't think we're healing in town. I think we have to heal in the fort. Yes. It's likely to just attack yeah. the town and burn it down, I feel. But I feel like we should be returning to the fort, because if we all stay here, it's going to be a greater risk for the townspeople. In the meantime, I have drafted out a letter that we can send out with a goblin to the fort. Oh! oh. All right, and... I'm trying to remember who knows about 
the hiding. So we need to send a message as well, I'll just say it for later, back with our boat to Drakus because we need reinforcements. Um, but we'll not do that today, I guess we'll do that once we return to the fort. I guess right. I'll send Willa, because I trust her so much, you know. Um, yeah. Well, uh, let's let's see these letters. The letter that you're drafting to to the enemy, and the letter that you're yeah. drafting to send back to Drekus. Which, remember, we're gonna get one message that we can send back, and then we don't have a boat on hand to send any other messages. So make sure it's a good one, um, and make sure it covers everything you need, and that it's convincing. Because you could say, "I need more people." But if they're not convinced that you need more people, they may not supply them. Um. You send the letter in my name, of course. Okay, very good. Are you going to read it out to people? That was so smart. Oh yeah, this is just the first draft. Um, I also needed to figure out what do we think is a good neutral location that their leadership could meet uh, us. And I think the town and our fort would probably not be neutral locations. I'm not sure. Outside ah. their fort isn't very neutral either. Yeah, um, somewhere in between would probably be right. I Maybe feel like we're a at a disadvantage inherently because they know this land better than we do right now. We've got to find something, but they might know it better than we do yeah going off of this map it would seem like the mountain pass would make sense uh the place where one would go through to get to the jungle of death from outpost santa barbara i will give you two clearance to decide who you want to send because i'm drafting a letter and i can't do both at the same time i will just trust your judgment and if you make a bad call you'll never make a decision ever again no it's fine <laughs> um figure it out I'll be right back uh let's see i need to ask a goblin how safe is the trip to fort kachuma from the other fort yeah i will go with you to listen to your conversation with said goblin um it's many days up a mountain and there's this land it's creatures the rocks themselves come alive and eat people from time to time no, that doesn't bad. sound very safe nothing is safe it's never safe for a goblin is it mainly more like dangerous for goblins or do these things happen to the orcs as well or oh. the humans well, the humans and the orcs also attack the goblins we are sad, pitiful people. We yes, need your no. help and mercy. That's what I'm asking. But if the humans and the orcs, that the orcs travel all the time through there, are they not getting attacked as much, or are they just stronger than you? They're so much stronger. I'm just, we're just, we're just weak little goblins. Please, please don't send us alone into the mountains. There's no food. We could send you with food. They'll, they'll take us captive. They'll enslave us again. They may even kill us for delivering these messages. We just want to know about the safety of getting there, even if we're sending our own troops. Don't worry. We'll include in the message. Uh, send the goblin back. Oh, how unharmed. I couldn't trust them to do that. No, no. What food would you send us with? <laughs> um... Let's see. House I, cat that make a difference. You eat house cats. They're very delicious. A little stringy. Quite yes, and what else do you eat? Have you ever eaten a... We could send you with a human child. I would never eat a human child. <laughs> but we could send you with one. There's a very nasty one that lives in the village. We could send you with just, just the little one. Just the one. That's so much responsibility. I'm just a meager goblin. I could never handle it. No, we could send a group of goblins with a little baby. And Why? You could eat it. Why would you send? A, why would you do such a thing? You're a bad mother. <laughs> I, I I laugh. Ah, Crumb's just joking. You'll laugh along with us. <laughs> <laughs> Which child would you send? Oh, it's small and meaty, but it's very annoying. It cries very much. You'd have to kill it quickly. Terrible. 
so terrible. I hope no one leaves such a child in the woods all alone. No, we send them under your guidance. Mm -mm. What, what I'm gleaming here is that they really do eat kids, huh? And has cats. <laughs> what? That, hey, I mean, I'm not saying that out loud to the goblin, okay? The, the house but, cats seem to be pretty certain. I don't know how you could possibly take that those words which were so vehemently denied and, and think that they would eat children. That's, that's not what they what would do. He what child. That, yeah. That's not what they would do. Hmm. I asked me, the, human baby. I'll ask the goblin, is there any place that you can think of as a nice neutral meeting ground that I was thinking the mountain pass, but apparently the rocks there come out and attack people, huh? Oh, well, I, I mean, the rocks everywhere will attack people, but not always, only sometimes. You know, the elementals, they come through, they eat us, they crush us. Uh, but maybe, maybe Lake Casitas? That's a neutral oh, place. That seems like a nice, quaint sounding place. Yes. It's not dangerous to get there. Oh, quite, quite dangerous indeed. Oh. Everything, it's, the whole world is dangerous. Okay. You've not seen well, the monsters crawl forth from the tar pits? Lake Casitas doesn't have not tar yet. pits, does it? No. Great. Oh, so we can send you. It'll be safe. No tar pits. Eh. Eh. If you send us to the orcs, they'll take us. They'll kill us. They'll enslave us again. No matter what you write, they won't listen. Our lives are in your hands. Please, please don't send Lake us back Cassidus. to the orcs. Can you tell us about like what we would have to expect on our way to Lake Casitas? There's a pass through the mountains. Um, and yeah, there's a big lake there. And um, wow. there's a shore. Uh, Wild creatures, coyotes, bunnies, deer, um, skunks, raccoons, possums, hawks, occasionally a, elementals. Yes, is there a passage there from Fort Kachuma as well? I only know the two passes through the mountains. Uh, the the pass, uh, the the San Marcos Pass and the uh, Gaviota Pass. One, one to the northeast and one to the northwest. Okay. Uh, and those are the paths that are currently marked on your map. This, There's a pass right here, and then there's a pass right over here. Oh. Yeah. Those are the two known ways through the mountains. Uh, that pass with the star on it, mm -hmm. um, how far... Is that about the same distance from Santa Barbara and Fort Kachuma? Uh, no, it is markably closer to the fort. Okay. Um, great. Yeah, I think Lake Casitas would be a good neutral spot then. By how many people are we approximately outnumbered right now? About 30? Uh, we are 20. I think this time there's supposed to be 50 in total. 50 orcs, a wizard, like at least 50, right? Yeah. That's the numbers that we were told. I'm not sure what number we were told last time and then what number we actually encountered, but roughly 50. Well, why don't we take our break here? Uh, we have some letters written. I have read the one written by Vincent. It's, it's a great diplomatic letter. Yes. Um, and we'll see what is going to happen on the other side of our break. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rise of Dracus Chapter 2. So, I see we have two letters written. One be sent to the homeland, asking for reinforcements. One to be sent to the enemy, asking them to come for a, a peaceful conversation.
Yes. I need five days to recover. Okay. To be back at full if we want to do that. Are we going to be doing... Um, are you going to wait five days so you're at full HP and then send the letter? Or are we going to send the letter during your five days of rest? If we send the letter, then... I mean, the Drekka's letter doesn't need to like we can send literally anybody of our people we trust we can send villa water and whatever that can start straight away um but the question is the other one if we want to accompl accomplish accompany a goblin then you know i need time for that <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah um Koibu, i'm mm -hmm. not sure exactly what hp i'm supposed to be at but on my sheet it says I'm at full, and though I would love to be at full, I don't think that I am. I think you're um, supposed to be at 19 out of 31. Yeah. Um, I will take it. Can you flip us to the other screen? That might have the other character or whatever. Uh, all of the HPs are linked between the character. Okay. But, oh no, it's I will 12. Take 19. You're absolutely right. It is 12. Well done, Trump. Thank oh. you for doing an extra seven damage to her. It's emotional damage. Um, I know, yeah. Okay. So, did they take... Do the villagers know if they took any horses when they went back to the fortress? No, they didn't take... Uh, well, when the seven orcs fled town earlier today, or yesterday, whenever that most recently was, they did not take any horses. However, it is known that if you ask around town because we're going to be skipping some time here and there's information to be gathered from town that's not but we have to place. spend at least the day here before we go back in the evening right or something like that and the town's folk you... are willing to talk so no no need for any yeah. complicated roles uh but it's known that the orcs beyond the mountains have 10 mounted orcs uh well 11 mounted orcs technically including the orc captain and Geraldine Silverworth and her eight bodyguards also all have mounts. Um, so, 11 mounted orcs, eight mounted bodyguards, one mounted mage. Although, you know, you don't always. You can't right. cast spells from horseback. If you're riding. Not you in usually motion, rule that. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, if you're yeah, riding. Yeah. But if you're just sitting 11, on top eight of the bodyguard. horse, yeah. We're highly outnumbered to horses. Uh, not just the horses, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, if you travel by foot from the town to the fortress, it takes about three days, correct? Yes. If you have a guide. Well, I assume they don't need a guide. I assume, like, just assuming they know well enough, then it would take three days for them to get there. And if they wanted to march anything back, it probably takes about three days back as well. Right. I uh, think we have the time to do. Hmm? Goblins are slower than humans, so goblins will take a little longer. So that three days was for humans. Yeah, I'm not worried about the goblins going there. I'm like asking about the people fleeing Perfect. to get there. I just yeah. want to make sure um, you're getting all the correct information that you need. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, well. The only, the worst case, they decide to attack us straight away once these goblins, uh, sorry, once these orcs arrive back, and then it's going to take, um, if they bring all their foot for three days to come back, which would be a total of, what, seven days or something to come back to town. Yeah, so we are good to rest for five days then, it sounds like. I think so. I and think I it should think be fine. we will just not scout the lake? Um, and just trust that it's neutral enough, since the goblins said so. No, there might be so. Yeah, did did they say so? Yeah, they okay. said something they about said, there yeah. might be an elemental, but whatever. There are elementals, and I think the whole big bad forest. And they appear at probably a, a dice roll of chance. All right, like a percentile. Just roll, yeah, just Out roll one hundred. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, got it. Yes, we're returning. So, you know, after having done the proclamation, updating people, doing the tavern thing, I think in the evening we return to the uh, to the fort. Um, do we need Campbell still? Can he go back? I think he can go back to his estate for now, right? I mean, yeah. we got five days. 
you know? Yeah, out of curiosity, I guess on the day after, um, what was the number one person that came to mind from Campbell as the traitor of the town? Himself. He said he's the biggest, or like the the biggest person who profits from this. Uh, but after him was Tina the blacksmith and her apprentice. And then Nick the swamper, Adam the harbor master, with his assistant Retta, Rash the doctor. What a name, by the way. Rash. And then <laughs> the <laughs> landlord. Assuming that this is, you know, fine for rusting to go to the town and talk to people. You don't have to like just be in bed all day. Um, to get I have full, yours, you're fine. To get full healing, three HP per day, you need full bed rest in the care of a doctor who also has an herbalism proficiency. So you're gonna have to get Rash, the doctor, to be your healer. Well, no, no, sorry, Trump, okay. you're your doctor. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're a medic. Um, so you're fine. You've got all the tools that you need to heal the party. You don't have to talk with Rash. Um, and so you okay. don't need to be watching the party all day long but they need bed rest, and then you can come and, like, check on them three times a day. Okay. Okay. We're just sleeping. I guess on one of those days, I'll, you know, I'll administer it to them, and then just out of curiosity, I'll go talk to the blacksmith. Yeah! You can go find uh, Tina, the blacksmith, with her apprentice, Amy. Um, yep. She's hammering away down in the town. Uh, I guess you appear in the doorway with your bodyguard, probably? No, he needs rest also. Just okay. me. Just you. No bodyguards whatsoever. You approach yep. the traitor with the yep. sword in her hand that she is forging. Its blade is red hot from uh, being thrust into the, the furnace. And she'll kind of leave it, you know, in, in the vice plier, in the vice pliers with the blade in the furnace heating as she gazes upon the, the human at her doorway. Yeah, Can I help I've, you? I wave and say hi. I'm just, uh, uh, we're from, I'm from Dracus, and I just wanted to visit all the shops and make sure everyone was in good shape after the orcs have left. Hmm. Well, I'm healthy and fine. Great. You here to place an order? Uh, yeah, I'd probably have talked to Elaine and... Oh, she's before. ordering one trader, please. No. <laughs> Did you two actually want to buy anything from the blacksmith? Um, no. No. Well, unless you guys wanted to equip the goblins. What do they currently we, have? We've got them with, like, bows from the orcs. Yeah, do we have enough, uh... We do have enough arrows in there. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Perhaps uh, you need a crown. She says. A crown? What would we need one of those for? So everyone knows that you're the one in charge. No, oh, no, there's no need for such formality. How else are people supposed to know who leads them? You can't possibly memorize the face of, of the leader if you don't see them all the time. Crown's a good way to differentiate uh, at a glance who's who's truly the power in the region. I don't think uh, all the towns have one of those. Um, it's more don't of a mayor system. A, don't you think a nice bronze crown would fit well on your head? You are, after all, the the spellcaster. You you're the true power here. <laughs> I, I'm flattered enough, and I think. Okay, how much for a crown? Well, a nice bronze crown. A couple of points. Maybe a couple of small, semi-precious gemstones set in it. A uh, little bit of, you know, secondary, slightly gilded crown in the background, creating a little shadow effect. Oh, that sounds a little it... expensive. Let's, let's go for something a little more low-key. Simple bronze crown. Just an easy way for everyone to know who's in charge. Uh, I think we could do that for 15 gold. Lord. Wow, I checked my pocket. A lot of money, but for a crown, it's not that much money. Oh, I totally don't remember if we have any money. Do we have 
have we gotten any money? Uh, you haven't looted anything since you've been here, so... Oh, that's right. Oh, we've looted the fort, but we only found crates with stuff there, not money. Barter with her. We have a crate of avocados that range in ripeness from unripe to ripe. I wrote that down. <laughs> Did we not discuss money that would have been found in the fort? Um, let's see. I've written down the stuff from the fort, I think. Oh. No. It was one box of pigments, abalone, abalone. blue flowers, dyes, spices, animal skins, avocados, colored rocks. Yeah, no well, there's money. a whole bunch of dead orcs, and there is money in the fort. There's definitely, I don't know how we uh, skipped over. Give us money. The, yeah, give us money. Fortress finances. Money, money, money. Money, money, money. Okay, so the money that Arching. exists in the fort. Um, all right, so we're gonna do... This much copper. So 1,600 copper. Um... Do we want to put that on a separate sheet or something? Can we have like a party treasure sheet? Yeah. I don't want to lug around 1,500 copper. You know? Amazing. Group gear, let's go. What's we the second number? Silver? Here you go. I have created a party sheet for you all. The group gear that you're looking at is chapter one's group gear. You don't want that. No, yeah, it was good. It was a good time. It was a good time. It's a different time now. Uh, here you go. Party sheet. Everyone should have access to it. Can be created by all players, edited by all players. There you go. Amazing. So wealth, personal wealth, wealth and hoard, wealth and hoard. Okay. How many? How much copper do we get? Sixteen hundred eighty-seven. Somebody went down through the sheep. Sixteen hundred eighty-seven. Yep. Oh, it's uh, silver. Two seven two silver. Yep. 184 gold. Wow, look at that roll. Wow. That's an excellent roll. That's uh, and a that lot. is the cash on hand. There's a lot of cash. Yeah. 292 is what are the chance? All right. I tell the blacksmith, um, I think that might be helpful. Let me walk around town a bit more, see the sights and. I just may come back to place an order for that crown. Well, okay. If you're comfortable being thought of as a lackey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll walk around town for a little bit, like say an hour, and then come back and I cast this little spell. Let's see. What spell are you casting? Little spell called ESP. ESP spell is used. The caster is able to detect the surface thoughts of any creatures in range, except for the those who are immune to it. It's stopped by a bunch of bullshit. You can probe the surface thoughts of one creature per round, getting simple, instinctual thoughts from lower order creatures. Probes can continue on the same creature from round to round or can move on to other creatures. Um, you can cast this through doors. So if you don't know what's on the other side, you could kind of figure it out through this. Uh, if you're using it as a program of interrogation, an intelligent and wary subject receives an initial saving throw. If successful, the creature... Um, successfully resists and the spell reveals no additional information. If it's failed, the caster may learn additional information according to the DM's ruling. All right. So, you cast ESP, presumably before you, you know, walk into range of her, and then yeah. step up and say, probe. Yeah, I will just start engaging in idle conversation to start off. Um, I look around the shop for any thing that looks like a crown no nothing that looks like a crown to be found here Lots no you don't have any crowns on display here of course not why would i i start detecting her surface thoughts um her surface thoughts are mostly on her work you know 
Uh, how long has this thing been in the fire? When do I need to take it out? I've got a few more moments. There's this guy again. With like a, you know, that sense of, here we go again. Well, um, I guess, uh, before I commission such a valuable piece, do you have any showcases of your work? Certainly. And she'll take out whatever she's working on, set it down somewhere, walk you over to a wall where she's got some basic, you know, basic supplies that everyone might need. So she's got like a scythe, she's got some nails, she's got some hammers, she's got some like essential ordinary tools, including some saws and that sort of thing. Um, but she blows right past these and heads on over to uh, the far side where she opens a barrel and will pull out this cloth um, and opening the cloth will reveal within it a two-handed battle axe done up in an orcish style. It's got some engravings on it that look like it's been you know, made with some sort of acid. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's not necessarily the greatest axe that you've ever laid eyes upon, but it is definitely something that she has put a lot of time and effort into. And it would be a highly effective weapon and is also like well decorated to demonstrate the um, important office of the holder, you know, the, the 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 one who wields this axe would surely be the free envy and all those who gazed upon them. What a marvelous axe, I say. It's certainly not in typical Drakesian forge style. Mark Tarak ordered a, uh, an axe to commemorate their victories. But here we go. Oh, um, if I wanted to purchase this instead, uh, how <laughs> much are you charging for this? Uh, if I sell this to you, the orc's going to come out of the mountains and take my head off. It's already been bought and paid for. It's not for sale, but it's a demonstration of my skill. Well, we were about to send them a message. I could deliver this for you. You know, somehow I don't trust the strange magic man who showed up in town yesterday with my life. Cool. ESP. Um, there's a, a strong sense of like, this guy's going to die so fast maybe I can get some money out of him before he kicks it just like another gullible another rube has walked into my office and maybe I can get some cash before he loses all of his money to foolishness you know our group is the one which uh, took over the fort supported by my mighty magic yeah uh, Lord Campbell said as much. Hmm. That's why I thought that you would be the appropriate person to wear the crown. After all. You know, it's, it's the mages of the world that really run things. Always have, always will be. And, uh, uh certainly if, if... You hear that Drekus is an empire now? Um, uh, if Empress Wick is going to reward someone for reconstituting this region. Um, well, it's probably going to be the wizard who makes everything happen. Oh, oh, you flatter me too much. Well, just a reasonable person who, who's got a good understanding of how the world functions. Wizards are always in charge at the end of the day. Fighters, warriors, dime a dozen. That, uh, Pentelin chick. Hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, I don't think Can I you need... at least to take thoughts on that because I want to hear where that burn's coming from. <laughs> Not that I mean, I'm just, you yeah, know, I'd, mean, like, I'd, like to, I'd like to know. <laughs> I have it running, so Pentelin chick sounds interesting. Let's, let's detect surface thoughts on Pentelin chick. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, just... It's... Uh, it's that same she old, She has a like, crush on me, Neil. Tell me. I know. I know. This wizard, just like all the others, clearly out for himself, flattery is usually the best way to get there. I was interested in her thoughts when she talked about Elaine in particular. Yeah, but when she's talking about Elaine, she's thinking about you. You know, she's oh. thinking about her sales. She's thinking about making making money and, and Elaine is a Elaine means doesn't to even end. register really. No, doesn't it's, even. It, it's elevating somebody by putting somebody else yeah. down. You know, it's bad. To make practice. you feel more important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, junior high school. Hmm. I don't think I need something quite as fancy as a crown. Do as you have a something a little crown? more humble? Hmm? Um, she looks you up and down. Well, what do you want, sir, my lord? Do you have a suggestion? Something along those lines, but not quite crown level. you want a tiara? <laughs> no. That's less than no. a crown, but usually more expensive. A little fancier work there. No. Well, this seems like a nice... Uh, pair of earrings. Nice little... Nose ring. Village. How about Finger a nice ring. pin? A pin to pin your cloak together. Absolutely. Can do. What's your family sigil, my lord? Oh, it's the mapper sigil. I, um... I'll get a little scroll with a, a pen that you'd be writing on it, and the pen will be the thing that goes through your cloak and connects, and the little scroll will sit there right on your lapel, keeping your clothes that together. That is actually quite cute. Marvelous. Uh, put me down for one of those. Actually quite cute? But with great ideas. Usually, flesh is not your strong suit, Neil. I'm gonna be honest here, okay? I not... have been. I've seen your board. bars, Neil, and they're trashy, okay? The, this is good. Take the win. Like... Uh, because of my City Dwarves campaign, I have been diligently trying to learn about fashion in order to better right. serve my player characters. Ooh. Well done. Thank it's you. Pain off. Yes, that is why I am wearing a Snuggie over my uh, collared shirt. Yes, that way I am look very fashionable comfy. and cozy. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, so she'll sell you this thing. She says that it would be best if it was made out of silver because that will catch the light. Um, gold would be better because that won't tarnish, but understanding your budget, like, we could also make it out of bronze if you really wanted. I ask for price tags on all three. Ah, uh, well... If it's made from bronze, it'll cost you 10 gold. If it's made from silver, it'll cost you 20 gold. If it's made from gold, it'll cost you 50 gold. Now, what do you have here? A pin for bronze is 10 gold when the crown would cost 15. I raise my eyebrow. ESP. Well, you know, it's in the craftsmanship. The crown is large, but the pin is... Um, intricate and it's the time that it would take to craft the details that would matter and a, certainly a, a lord of your stature can s afford such things um and the the surface thoughts are like come on man you can afford this they know you want it just because you know i came from a uh, merchant upbringing myself and i believe that while i could afford it i should um, I've come to patron all of the all of the shops here, and I can't blow my entire budget on you. Well, I'll just raise the taxes or collect more taxes, and there's plenty to go around. You know, the government really ought to just be a way to siphon money back to the people, and you'll hire me to do this today and someone else to do something else the next day. Anyways, uh, five gold for the bronze. How's that sound? Call it eight. Give me some money to, to make on, on the side. Some actual income here. 
All right, fine. It's good. Excellent. She'll reach out a hand um, and with a smug sort of like, oh, another sucker in her <laughs> mind, uh, she'll shake your hand and tell you that she'll set about work on it immediately. Um, she'll quench the steel blade she's working on and go pull out some bronze, uh, some copper and some tin ingots and tell you that it should be ready in three days. Great, thanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, head back to the fort and, you know, right. make sure my patients are doing fine. Yeah, your patients are doing great. So we've got, we've got in the fort letters. The first letter is the one that we're going to send back to Drekus, back to Lord Marshall, the overseer of this operation. And this letter, we're going to get to the ship that's hanging out behind the islands by giving it to someone who's going to sail uh, Lord Cam- Campbell's yacht out there. Right? That's the plan? Yep. Okay. Right. Uh, would you like to read the letter that you're sending to Lord Marshall? Uh, I can read it. Um... Huh? <clears throat> Lord Marshall, I write to you with urgent news. Upon our arrival, we found out that the outpost had been taken over by a group of orcs. We drove them out of the nearby fort and town, but it seems they are part of a greater force. The army of Farasi, hailing from Solom, is currently exploring the island, looking for resources. They are a great force. We expect about uh, 50 orcs, a wizard named Geraldine Silverworth, and potentially a cleric in that old fortress that seems to have sprung forth as a part of the magical resurgence of this land. <clears throat> the group has no interest in conquest uh, from the information we've gathered. They are merely opportunists. Considering their force, we will try for a diplomatic approach because we currently do not have the numbers and people for any other solution. But both diplomatic pressure as well as preparation in case of aggression, I urgently need to request some more soldiers. We are currently outnumbered by at least 40 people and still recovering from today's fight. Uh, the people of Santa Barbara are relieved to be part of the Empire once more. We cannot fail them. Sincerely, Kel Elaine Pentelin, please find attached crates with samples that we found in the fort. All right. Call it, writing back home, asking for reinforcements and uh, advice on, on how to proceed somewhat. Not really. Actually, you're just asking for soldiers. I only ask for soldiers, but you know. All right. Little status update. Perfect. And samples of what, what's being found here. The the samples that the Verasi Empire have been packing up and getting ready to send back to their own yep. folks. Lovely. All samples now. Okay. Uh, and you can task a minion. Someone will here will probably know how to sail a ship because Lord Campbell certainly doesn't. Um, and since time is not of the essence and it's not like this thing needs to race to them immediately, we can sort of hand wave getting some townsfolk to do this job um that's fine well probably not the harbor master who's been flagged as a you know yeah somebody else somebody campbell probably can recommend we're not gonna worry about it they'll sail out there they'll deliver the message to the boat um probably with another message that you've written to the boat captain saying you know this is what you want uh and that's all fine and well and we don't have to worry about pencil it's good enough um, Rekus. Excellent. And now we've got this other letter, uh, which there are two drafts of. And, and it's signed by Elaine Pencilin, but it was written by Vincent Mapper. So, uh, Vincent, would you, would you read this message for us? Sure. <clears throat> Dear Geraldine Silverworth, I trust this message finds you well. My purpose in writing to you today is to discuss the ongoing situation on the island and to seek a resolution that prioritizes peace and mutual understanding. We have come from Drekus to find our outpost Santa Barbara, the rightful land of Drekus taken over by orcs. We found the town enslaved by the nearby fort of orcs led by Garnasha. Through taking over the fort to defend our lands and talking to her, we discovered that your group is from Solom. We would hope that this is an isolated incident and you don't intend to contest Drakus's claim to this land. We understand that you may be more interested in the treasures in Fort Kachuma in the Jungle of Death. 
Our aim is not to dispute your presence and your findings, but to find a mutually agreeable solution that ensures the well-being of all parties involved. It is our sincere hope that we can engage in a constructive dialogue to address any grievances, misunderstandings, or concerns that may have arisen. We propose a meeting at a neutral location, Lake Casitas, where representatives from both parties can engage in a meaningful conversation to explore potential resolutions. Your cooperation in this matter is highly appreciated, and we are optimistic that together we can reach an agreement that serves the best interests of everyone involved. We look forward to your positive response. Um, and then I guess on the last start, um, please meet us at Lake Casitas on this date, which is, let's say, four days after the planned Actually, I'll just leave a little part there so I can fill it in when we get there. Uh, thank you for your attention to this matter. Sincerely, Kel Elaine Pentelin. Excellent. <laughs> That's such a diplomatic message. I'm sure. I'm sure it will be well received. And who's sending this message? Is it the party? Is it a goblin? Is it a local townsfolk? Our plan is once we've healed up, we will escort a goblin most of the way to the fort and then let the goblin finish the delivery. Excellent. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't just run off. And, and Crumb, during yeah. all of this message writing and all of this plotting and all of this scheming, what is your role in everything? Because I know you were pretty badly wounded and you also needed many days of rest to, to heal back up. Um, so are you just resting, or do you have some plotting and scheming of your own? I think Crumb's just resting. I don't think that any of this, like, letter writing and <clears throat> diplomatic negotiations is up Crumb's alley. She's just thinking about, like, okay, we're going to get to the fort. We've got to get gotta get a scope of the fort. We're going to get to the lake. Where are the weak points? Where are, the, where are we going to meet them exactly? Like, she's just thinking through how the interaction will go practically. Okay. okay. Cool. Well, why don't we skip ahead a few days until everyone is well rested? Um, the, offer, the town is fairly self-sufficient at this point. They don't need any oversight from the party. And we can skip to Friday the 5th of July. Um, the party is all... Hold on. 31 minus 12 divided by 3. It's actually going to be 7 days until Crumb is healed. Um, so we're going to do Sunday the 7th when the whole party is back at full HP, guaranteed. Uh, and I'm going to need... I'm going to need Elaine, our party leader, to roll me a D100 to see if anything... Anything happens during this week? No! <laughs> 50. Perfect number. Right in the middle. Come on, go ahead. Something happens, but it's not immediately of danger to the party. What we see is one day in the evening, there's um, an odd glow from one of the mountains. And as the sun begins to set over the ocean, well, part of the ocean, depending on where you're sitting, um, this glow seems to grow like a forest fire might, but then it maintains a certain boundary. Not a huge boundary. It's hard to tell how big it could be. It's, you know, maybe 100 feet across or something because the mountains are 10, 15 miles away. It grows to a certain size, um, and then the whole flame patch, the patch itself begins to move along the edge of the mountains as if the, the fire itself is alive and walking. And at some point it will go over the mountains, and then you'll be able to see like a little bit of alpine glow from the, the fire on the backside of the mountains, and then it'll just fade. Is it uh, like a giant elemental? It could be a fire elemental walking around. It's very far away, but it's dark or it's evening time. And so the light shines from a, a great distance. That might be a fire elemental cruising around through the mountains. 
There's not a magic shop in town, is there? There is not a magic shop in town, unfortunately. What yeah. happened to it? Does it I'm seem like? Does it seem like it? The light stopped because it died or something, or I feel like it just went over the backside of the mountains, and ah. then it must have like went down the mountain because for a while you could still see the glow at the top, but then you know, it, the glow just faded. So maybe it walked down the backside of the mountains, or maybe it buried itself in the ground, or maybe it went out, maybe it was killed, but the glow did fade over a period of ten minutes. <clears throat> what if like? <clears throat> the goblin said that sometimes there are elementals, like air elementals and stuff like that, or rock elementals. How does that work? As in, if you see, is it like sometimes they kind of spawn and despawn, they like come into existence and then blip out? Or is it like, it's there, it's somewhere until you kill it or it dies or it's dealt with? Man, that is such a great question. Um, the wizard might might know something about this. Let me take a look at your character sheet, Mr. Vincent, because the inner workings of magic are often lost upon the ordinary people of the world. Um, That's valid. Let's see. Vincent, I'm going to need you to make me an intelligence check at, like, minus two. Okay. I'll just push the button and then subtract two after. Oh, well not a great role um you're a mapper you're a cartographer you're not necessarily an elementalist the the study of elemental creatures is really not helpful to you in your what do we call it um education or in your profession in your domain yeah uh, and so this is just one of those areas where you could speculate but you don't have any super reliable information at least nothing mm -hmm. the dm will give you yeah, I, I'll comment. Uh, yeah, I made a fire wanders around. Whatever. Oh. <laughs> we'll be fine. All right. Oh, I know nothing about elemental servants, and yeah. I'll, you know, I'll look to you whenever we have to fight one. Yeah. We um, also have to yeah. scroll down, Neil. The rolls are stuck. I'll hopefully add probably when it hits you it burns <laughs> since it's made of fire that would make sense maybe it'll hurl firebolts who knows you sound a little bit excited about that not really i hope we don't meet it all right i like your new uh brooch by the way yeah oh, yes. picked it up Very uh cool. is it nice looking it's adorable yeah, I proudly pin it. Show it off. Oh. Uh, looks to... Oh, and... I... If uh, this was the biggest, you know, trader other than Campbell, I don't think we really have anything to be worried about about the town. Looks like they were just... You know, some people worked with the orcs because they made them. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we just have bigger fish to fry right now. We can always get back to that part later, you know? I don't think there's anything really of concern there. Well, um... Sunday the 7th is when everyone's going to be healed. And coincidentally, that is the day, probably not coincidentally, that is the day that Lord Campbell he invites the three of you, actually four of you, he's going to invite Vincent's bodyguard as well. Mm -hmm. uh, five of you, he's going to invite Willow. He knows Willow's important. Um, dinner at his estate. Oh, we shall graciously accept. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And Excited. for the occasion, I guess I'll have a bath before we go because it's sorely needed before heading out. It's good to make yourself presentable in these. Crum, what about you? Any plans? Any? any Just getting ready. Getting ready. No. Vince, Vincent? Yeah, any... I'll, I'll make sure to wash my feet and to wear my nicest sandals. Excellent. 
Vincent, any plans or preparations for you? I'd already prepared with this fancy pin. Excellent. Well, you'll get back to the Campbell estate on the far side of town. And you can see that he's hired musicians from the, the local town. And he's had his cooks prepare the finest foods and the finest meals with the best cheeses and the best wines pulled from the surrounding areas. And he's got a nice little banquet for the five of you all set up with, you know, entertainment on the side and uh, servants working in unison to bring everyone food at the same time. A nice little presentation with all of the, you know, accents needed. Uh, that is a pretty good setup over here. We're being served. <clears throat> Primary course is some sort of fish stew, but there's a lovely little salad on the side, and you've got some appetizers of like thinly sliced beef that you'll toss on some really hot rocks to cook them. Um, and then, you know, there's some bread and cheese and wine and some other assorted small meats at the end of the meal. And then followed up by a like a like a grape pie, because it's not always a, the great availability of all the fruits in all the places. An avocado pie is just not that appetizing, but grape pie, good stuff. Is it? You can't have make you had a grape face at a pie? dinner event like that. You have to. <laughs> no, I'll just skip dessert because I still have to fit it to my plate, man. You know. Oh I'm sorry, God. I really, I really shouldn't. I grape really pie? shouldn't. What's wrong with grape pie? Yeah, I've never, is it a thing? Is grape pie a thing or is Neil making I've never this up? I've never heard of it, but I've I would never imagine heard of grape it's pie like, before. I don't know, like blueberry pie is totally a thing. I love blueberry yeah. pie. I can't be. Holy shit, it's a thing. I'm dying. <laughs> it is a thing. Somewhere, in yeah. and in New York. So how bad can it possibly? I'll eat your grape pie. It's fine, Neil. Hand it over. It's okay. No faith. No faith whatsoever. All right. So it's during this lovely little dinner um, that he'll stand up during the, the dessert course. He'll make a little toast. Uh, uh, to... Oh, this seems like the right time to cast ESP. <laughs> uh, cast a spell at the dinner table? <laughs> Uh, yeah, how do you do this? Are you just casting it in front of everyone, or are you excusing yourself to cast it? Are you it dropping your back? fork and you're like, "Hello, <laughs> I'm back again." I feel like uh, this is something that, yeah, it's got vocal components, but it doesn't have any noticeable effect. I think it should be fine for me to, you know, noticing Campbell's about to make his speech. I'll, okay. as discreetly as possible, go ahead and cast my spell. As discreetly as possible. All right. There's maybe a pause as you're saying weird things and moving your hands in weird patterns, but Bruce Campbell trusts you. Um, and so he doesn't stop his speech. He figures you know what you're doing. Uh, and he'll say, uh, to my, my newfound friends, my newfound companions, my, my newfound jailers. Um, I don't know how many more opportunities I'm going to have to live a life of luxury and treat and host with uh, wizards and nobles and brave, sometimes invisible halflings. I detect thoughts on him while he's talking about us to see <laughs> what he thinks of us. His surface thoughts are... clearly been working on this speech and he's got like his words planned out and you can see in his mind he's like going over what the next set of words are going to be while he's giving the speech and so he's pretty focused on that but he's also you know trying to note reactions and faces and so he'll look at crumpet who i imagine is pretty happy and cheerful and chilling at the table that's the vibe i get yeah. from crumpet yeah I'm and enjoying then, the food. Yeah. And so his internal reaction will be like, good, I'm glad she's getting along. And he'll glance over at Willa, who is maybe a little stiff and uncomfortable in this situation, but also she's never been wined and dined like this before. She's just some dumb nobody from a town that's been deeply dishonored. And uh, so being a guest at such a thing is awkward for her. 
you know. I think from some... time to time I probably pick up some of the cutlery just to show which one to use when, you know, I'll be like, mm. this one, it's this mm -hmm. one. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, and so when he's gazing at Willa, who's managing through, there's a, a brief thought of like, okay, good, good. And then he'll glance over at Vincent and you're giving him this like quizzical look as you're, you know, you're reading his thoughts and reading his face. Um, and his mind will be like, oh, uh, this one, he seems so nice, but I really don't know what's happening under the, there. Uh, and then as he glances at Elaine while he's still speaking, there's this sense of like urgency that crosses his mind. Um, but he, he was always trying to focus on the words. So these are the, the other things happening as he's talking. Uh, dear friends, blah, 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 last time I might be able to give such a speech. No, no, last time I might be able to live like this. Uh, as I understand, the, the coming days and weeks will be helping to decide the, the fate of this town. I have thrown my lot in with each power as they have uh, come to the surface, but I want it to be known that I think... Rekus is the rightful rulers of this town and that I stand firmly beside you uh, come hells or high waters with another careful glance at Elaine trying to judge her face and being like, okay, this is, I gotta, I gotta make sure this is right. So, dear friends, before, now that, now that you're rested and healed and before anything gets too out of hand, I thought it might be nice to have an evening of relaxation and celebration because life is short and we may not get another opportunity to enjoy peace and each other's company. Glancing at all the party members. She's having a good time. She's awkward that he's having a good time. Not sure what the wizard's doing. Am I impressing her? Sort of that sort of set of thoughts. Yeah. And, and and so, newfound friends, uh, I would like to make a toast to the rise of Drakus. He'll hold up his mug. Um, I think to myself, he I said this title. We, I, guess, I guess we toast. Cheers. Ah, uh, well, as long as we're having such a, and he'll sit back down, such a uh, informal and friendly meeting. Um, Crumb, would you, would you share us a story of uh, where you come from? Who your people are? Your family? Yes. I love this uh, little con. Oh my goodness. Okay. I have quite a few brothers and sisters. How about... Seventeen. Um, oh, your mother must be a very busy woman. Yes. Yes, she was. Uh, there was one time that my my brother uh, stole an octopus uh, from the fisherman in our town. And it was quite a hassle because... He thought it was funny to put it in places to scare the other children. And so for a while, there was this octopus that all the parents were hearing about, but nobody could find it. And everyone thought it was him because he was so mischievous. Um, and nobody, yeah, so my mother tried to confront him uh, and said, "I, is it you? Was it you, uh, Pumpernickel? And he said, no, of course it wasn't me. And yeah, so then he had to, of course, that octopus started rotting, so he had to get rid of it, started digging a grave in the backyard, put it in, had to go steal another octopus. And this went on for months until there were like 12 octopuses missing, stolen. Uh, and then finally father found him and gave him a whooping. Right wow. in front of everyone. Yeah. That's uh, quite the family you've got. Oh, There's yeah. only one out of 17. You haven't heard the other stories yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, are all of your family members so light-fingered? What does that mean? Quick to 
reappropriate other people's property. Are you asking if halflings are thieves? You, well, you're telling me a story about your brother stealing things, and you're often invisible and walking around unseen. He was unheard. eight years old. Yeah, he stole 12 octopus. Do you come from a town of idiots, or is your brother a genius? My brother's a genius. Wow, he's incredibly in intelligent. Yes. Yes. What about you, Vincent? Tell us, tell us a story about where you come from. Ah, uh, well, I was raised in capital of Dracus, name drop. What was that? Wickthron Rorenta. Wickthron Rorenta. Wickthron Rent? Neil, you said it's your name. You go for it. You know, this is on you. <laughs> it's a great name. Wickthron Rorenta. Okay. Well, I hail from Wickthron Lorenta, where I have run a map store there for years with my family. But one day I was uh, scouted by the military. And Ooh. yes, I, they put me into wizarding school. And I learned all of these handy spells. Is it is it um, true what they say about wizarding school that it's dangerous and that you risk your life just attending, or is that just is that just rumors? Oh, that is definitely rumors. Although, uh, you always have to. There was that one student who got singed a little bit from a stray fireball, but you know that's because he was too far mm. forward in the demonstration. Ah, right, right, and um. What brought you to us here? Well, I have come for adventure and for uh, to see about whether or not I could put my own. Uh, I want to experience the frontier, the stuff that maps are built of. Uh, explore new areas, map new areas, and of course, support our own Elaine Pentelin. And ah. I toss it over to her. Prestigious lane. Such a, a noble family you come from. Do you have any good tales of of growing up under such a an ancient flag? What makes for a good tale, Lord Campbell? That is the question, isn't it? I, you, I did literally you steal asked. a dozen octopuses? I think it's octopi, technically. <laughs> and no, I did not. I don't think in my family there is space for innocent mistakes you make when you're young. Mm. Well, it's surely not in our a, nature. A, a tale of... Chasing boys round the yard with a stick then, right? Oh, yes, my brothers and sisters did that very much as well. I imagine. 17 of them, I bet they're all chasing each other with sticks in the yard. Mother and father had a hard time keeping up with us. <laughs> it doesn't sound like they were having a hard time keeping up with each other, though. I'll take a deep breath and I'll take a <laughs> swig of my... What are we Ooh. drinking? Wine? Wine. A swig of my wine, I'll say, um... When I was a little child, I used to, you know, have have these bouts of being energetic, asking questions, running around, all these things. Mm-hmm. I guess kids do. But... It's... I realize these days that it's a luxury not everybody has, you know. For some people, growing up happens very quickly, and knowing where your place is needs to happen even faster. And that was the case for me. If you come from a family where prestige, rising up, reputation is everything, you need to grow up a little faster than other children. So there was not much laughter to be had in my childhood, unfortunately. I'm sorry, I know it is 
it's not a it doesn't make for a good dinner story i'm i'm sorry about that well, no need to feel bad about your life you don't have to apologize no getting... i don't feel bad about my life it made me who i am today i'm just saying it is not particularly silly or fun mm -hmm. what about you lord campbell ah Sure, well, you've got some good tales for us. Absolutely. Uh, I came from a family of not much. There's not much to say about my home life, but I came out here to this land seeking change, opportunity, new things. Um, and you've, all, you've already heard my meteoric rise to power in, in the local area. The story that I want to tell you all. Uh, Story is, is maybe the greatest story of my life. The story of finding true and good friends. The story of the day I was accosted on my own yacht by a brave wizard, a beautiful relative. While he was thinking about what story to tell, I ESP him to see if he was going to tell a different one before and then chose not to. Uh, no, he was desperately searching for a story that he could use to relate um, specifically to Elaine. He was mm. sort of like, what child? I, okay, that childhood story doesn't... Like, he that was going story, for the a... long run to be like, aren't we siblings, though? Like, it took him an hour to get there, but he is getting there. Mm -hmm. Uh, you Beautiful know, relative. What a what an expression. All right. right yeah. You know, it, that day, the world changed. I, I've been sitting pretty as a, a lord for some time. Clearly undeserved. Well aware of it, but enjoying the opportunities life gave my way. And and then there was this mysterious wizard and this this uh, warrior half elf and the invisible halfling. And, and of course, uh, he points to Vincent's bodyguard. And, um, you know, I think that moment on the boat being questioned and scolded and, and approached politely, um, I realized my, why the gods put me here, why my boring life back home led me to this land of adventure, led me to being the, the ruler of this town, and finally led me to um, being this lot. That's because the, the things we do here today are going to, to resonate through time. We, we see the great rising empire of Brekus meeting head on the overwhelming eastern empire of Rossi's people. I cannot help but feel that how our two how this this next series of fortnights unfolds will inevitably shape the futures of our people and i think it's you know humans half elves halflings we're all different folks and we're all bound up together in this, this uh, fate of ours and i think that it's it's no mere coincidence that my probably half sister is the one who has arrived here to meet me to to put me you know take me from my position of nobility that was not <clears throat> earned from her position of nobility that was earned he says like sure um I think that there's a, a greater work, a greater thing at work here, bringing us together, binding us together, shaping our collective futures. I'm gonna put down my fork and my knife. I, I'm going to sit up in my chair and I'll say, you know, Lord Campbell, if we would have had the time to go through the entirety of that etiquette book that I cited to you that night that we met, 
<laughs> you would have noticed that talking about family relations and politics at a dinner occasion such as this one is highly inappropriate. Is it? I did miss that part of the book, I suppose. Or, um... Would you like a chance to speak freely? Is that what you're looking for? Because I'm getting tired of this running around the same issue for half of the evening. I just... ESP! <laughs> Why? Why does it... Why? What, what's the problem? I'm just trying to be friendly, and no matter what I say, she's Lord pissed Campbell, at me. This would is... you like to see, seize an opportunity or not? I'm not... I, I have no grand plans. I just thought it might be nice to reminisce and share our life stories and recognize that there's, you know, there's something here. There's something going on, and I think that it's worth mentioning, or at least worth acknowledging that there's a, a greater thing at play here. Maybe I'm silly. You know, what do I know? I'm, I'm raised in a poor town, brought up on my own, right. no formal training, you know, barely All got right. my letters together. I'll put my napkin down, I'll, I'll stand up from my chair, and I'll say, if you would excuse us for a second, of course. we will go to the balcony for a moment. Lord Campbell, if you would, please follow me. And he'll follow you eagerly to the balcony, and Trump, you can, your ESP has a range on it, doesn't it? Yeah, but I don't eavesdrop. You um, don't eavesdrop? Yeah, Crumb, no. and... Uh, shortly thereafter, it says, I'm going to, excuse me, Molly, go to the restroom. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. There um, we go. Uh, Crumb, I'm going to need you yeah. to make me, first off, you can make me a detect noise check. So that way you can sit deeper inside the house and over here. I and mean, if you fail the detect noise check, you're going to have to make some sort of check to get closer to the party. Uh, but just start okay. with the detect noise. That didn't work out well, right? So you're going to have to get closer. Okay. Um, so I'm going to need... You don't want to be detected, right? So what's a, no. what's a move silently check look like for you? Sneak up on them. Ah, there you go. You can find a nice spot. Sneaking into the, the room that they're, they're out... They're outside on a balcony, the room just before that, you can kind of walk on in, move off to the side, near one of these open windows, plop yourself down underneath a desk, and uh, comfortably overhear everything. And outside, cool evening, right before everything is gonna really heat up in this part of the world. Laying, you, you've got Lord Campbell, balcony. Um, I'm looking outside and I'll say quietly, you know, you are a very charismatic man, but I'm not sure if you're cold enough to actually be a noble in the end. Thank you. It's not a compliment. Like... It's just a fact. <laughs> what? It sounded like a compliment to me. Lord Campbell, what do you want? No, I'm not really certain. Living life by the seat of the pants for so long, taking things as they come. I haven't had a, a grand ambition. Wait forever. Like to get to know you better. We don't run across many half elves, but uh, get the impression you'd rather see my head on the pike of a castle wall than chatting with you. Well, I'm chatting with you now, am I not? You are. And he'll put out a hand, patting you on the shoulder. I appreciate that. But you brought me out here, away from prying ears. Why have you never met another half-elf? Why does it have to be me? There's plenty of them out there that you can throw yourself at. Why, why, why now? Why this? As I said, I take life as it comes. And here you are, standing before me. Possibly family, possibly not. How could I ever know? But why do you care then if you don't know? I like the thought of it. 
Don't you miss family? Wouldn't you like to have people who care? People who, who people see you who for care. who you are. I mean, come on. I, I know you've got family, but... You and I know that our, our childhoods aren't always the easiest as a half-elf. Things said in whispers, looks between other people. A little hush-hush here. A little hush-hush there. Not quite fitting in with the rest of our siblings. There's a certain alienation. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the one who needs to get over. Uh, maybe I'm the one who's who's focused on on these things too much. But I just thought. What happened to your mother, Lord Campbell? Uh, well. You mean, how did I come to be? No, I mean, does she consider you family? Are you close? Do you write her letters? Yeah, she is she was... dead? Well, she loved me. She is dead by now. Um, some 10 years ago or so. Nothing nefarious, just, you know, natural causes. Uh, can't always afford clerics or healers. Sickness comes through. Fever takes her. Terrible thing. Um, it happens to all of us. It happens to the best of us. Similar fevers have taken other members of my family before. Um, but we had a... She, she loved me very much. Certainly a lot more than my father or my other siblings. Aunts and uncles. Why do you even care about your father if he didn't care? Why do you give him that power over yourself? Oh my god. Didn't expect you to get quite so deep, but um... Is no, it family, really deep? Family's complicated. Yeah, of course. Of course. Family dynamics. How do you... Why do you care about someone who loves you less than they love your siblings? Power of, of relationships between parents and children. There's a lot of pressure well, there. I understand that, but it's... So have you ever met your father in person? Oh, oh, you mean you mean the the one who the elf who who sired me? No. Well, I assume that is the one you wanted to relate to me about. I know nothing about the other rest of your family. I take it. Should I know your family? I don't think so. There's no well, reason. That's to. what I'm talking about. Well, I've never met the man. Did you? What does he look like? I mean, I'm not even sure it's the same one. I mean, it might not be, but... I mean, how many... How many elves come through human lands, knocking up human women, and then moving on? How many? Married women, seemingly. How many could there be? Yeah, how many could there be? What do you think? Only a couple. There's not that many elves in the world. There's not many elves that travel into Drekus. Uh, you would know better than I am. I, I've lived a simple life. Poor life. So, I'm not sure if what you're trying to achieve is do you want me to recognize you as my brother and therefore make you part of the family, helping you achieve great fame and power? Whoa, whoa, or are you whoa, trying whoa, whoa. to talk to me about, you know possibly share trauma we might have from childhood memories i'm i'm having a very hard time understanding what you want from me well, i don't know what sort of people you hang out with but i don't have a goal i don't have an ambition I don't have a plot or a scheme. There's no ruse. I'm not trying to get anything from you. I'm not asking for something from you. I'm not trying to, you know, there's no objective. Just saw what I thought was a like-minded person. I wanted to talk, wanted to get to know you, wanted to connect, just, just to be a friend. Is that so nefarious? Is that so, so difficult to understand? Just two people, similar origins, different worlds, hanging out, getting along, sharing parts of our lives. 
you and I have absolutely nothing in common except for those pointy ears. And you know what? We are very different people, you and I, and I don't mean that negatively. But don't tell me you're coming to me because you care about small talk with a person who never makes small talk. All right. Bell. So, so which one is it? Just trying to make friends in this world. And uh, I got it. You got chips on your shoulders. They're stuck there. Okay. Well, if you are trying to be just friendly, I will leave you with a little oyster for your efforts. How about that? I will tell you a family story. Do you want to hear one? love to excellent it's a sad story so settle down <laughs> when i was a little child at some point i thought it's unfair that everybody always treats me differently it's it's just unfair i'm doing my part i'm training really hard i'm being obedient i'm being a good child and i deserve to be accepted for that but my family wouldn't accept me uh, they were relentless as i should should have been i was it was a rare thing to do but it took me years to figure that out i uh used to be very close with my mother not so much with my father for obvious reasons like my true father you know mm -hmm. the one who actually cared about whether i existed or not and you mean I would ask the, a question. The human man who raised you. Yes. I would ask my mother questions. I would ask her, "How did you meet? And where where did I come from? And why do I look different from all the others?" And she wouldn't answer. She didn't dare. And she said, "I I couldn't ask her about it." And I was upset. And I was angry. And I went to my father because I thought maybe he would have the answers and maybe my mother was just being stubborn. And it was a winter day. It was really close to the year changing. You know, all the family was around mm -hmm. for the big celebrations and everything. So I came to the, to the big dinner table and I went to my father and I said, Dad, you know, Sir Pentelin, as you would address him. Um, mother doesn't want me to ask her where I come from. Mm. And he took me by the collar and he dragged me outside in the snow. And I don't remember much. I really, it wasn't like I was really there. But when I came to, I was sitting in our stable next to the horses. And he said to me, either you come inside as a pentolin and you know who you are. Or for all I care, you stay out here. And freeze to death. And I stayed. I can't tell you how far long I stayed. It felt like a really long time. But that day... I decided that I was a pentolin and there would be no more questions and that I would do everything, everything I could to show my family that I belonged. So if you're asking me, aren't you wondering? I stopped wondering a very, very long time ago. And I'm very proud of what I have achieved for my family, and I will never stop. 
being grateful for what they have given me, because back then I was ungrateful. I didn't see my father as a man who accepted me, even though I was a bastard. He gave me my rank, my title. He could have just thrown me out. He could have murdered me when I was a child. Nobody would have cared with his power and his position. And I was being ungrateful. And I, I was being a brat. And I was challenging him in front of the entire family. And I will never do anything to hurt him ever again. Ah, uh, explains it. It explains a lot. Explains why I'm bad at small talk, for example. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I feel no animosity towards you, Lord Campbell. Maybe there's a part of me that envies your, you know, strive for identity and happiness and family and, you know, the way you leisurely sit on your yacht. Maybe there's a part of me that envies that, but that part will never ever show because I have a role to play and I have things to achieve and there's only so much time in the day you can, you know, spend your energy doing that. But I'm not evil and I feel no hatred towards you. If anything, I'm just frustrated because I see you as somebody who could use their talents much better and be much more effective, but I do understand that not everybody's life is a life of strive and struggle. Some people, you know, like to kick back and relax and enjoy the time they actually have because their purpose is different from mine. At the risk of alienating you and losing all this great progress I feel we've just made, I gotta ask. We live a long time, you and I. We're gonna outlive our parents, obviously. We're gonna outlive a lot of folk. And who are you gonna be? You're no longer trying to impress your dear old dad. What are you gonna do for the majority of your life when he is long gone and you reign as head of your family, maybe? I will never be the head of my family. I can't bear any children. It would be a waste of time. And I don't think I will be living for such a long time, Lord Campbell. I have a high, higher rank, higher-ish rank than I used to have in the Trakistian military. Times are rough. There's always somebody needed in a difficult position. And it's not like I can take a vacation or time off and just not do this anymore. And soldiers don't all make it to very old age, especially not the uh, ambitious ones. A life of servitude, is it then? Happy to have the place somebody, you have. I'm not saying happy, but where are we if we don't have people who do that part? And you know, I think there's a great satisfaction in knowing who you are and where you belong. There are many people who look for that their entire life, you know, that that being content and maybe content is enough. Maybe, you know, all the other happiness is not for everybody, but content and knowing where you belong and what you do is a that's a great achievement in life. I'm proud of that. Ugh. Sounds like a hard, hard, unpleasant, brutal existence. I don't know how you do it. Well, it does have its moments, you know. I thought your dinner is really nice, for all that matters. Thank you. I'm just I'll, not uh, one for compliments and small talk, that's all. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop bugging you. I, I get the vibe. There ain't any change in there. Uh, You're not bugging me. I just want to be very clear that if you what you seek is friendship with me, this is all there is. I'm this not changing. It. You're not changing. Yeah. Nope. This is it. So easy small talk. Not the person for that. But if you just want to sit around at dinner looking at me while I'm eating my food, I'm fine with that. 
You want me to give you literature recommendations? I can do that. If you would like to know about etiquette, no problem. I can cite some poems, but um, light-hearted conversation, not my strong suit. Mm. Well, you know what is my strong suit? Light-hearted conversation. Having dinner with friends. The well, how ever about present we thought that I can fix her. All right. <laughs> well, how about this? What if we make small talk? You make small talk to me, and I will listen. Huh. That's only half the fun, but we'll get you there. Maybe, maybe you'll teach me to read, and I'll teach you how to enjoy people's company. Oh, well, I don't know which one is more difficult, but we can give it a try. <laughs> uh, well, uh, if I remember from your book, a host should not leave their guests waiting. Oh, well, that is correct. And, also? Uh... I trusted you with these words. Don't waste that. Yeah, I recognize you uh, didn't share these with your other friends. Well, I am also their leader, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll uh, keep this in mind. Let's go back in. All right. Upon hearing their conversation finish, I will skedaddle the fuck out of there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, you can make your way back down. Thank I think you. the it's going to be Vincent, Vincent's bodyguard, um, and Willa. Willa? <laughs> Three of the seven people are left at dinner. Well, everyone else is gone. Soon Crumpet arrives, and moments later, um, Lord Campbell and Elaine will arrive back down. Uh... Vincent, while you were sitting with your, your bodyguard and Willa, I'm not sure what the bodyguard's personality is, but Willa is very stiff and uncomfortable in this situation. What's Vordant like? Uh, he is comfortably silent. Excellent. So he revels in the silence. And I know that about him, so I don't try to make small talk. So we all eat in silence. It's just the three of you sitting in silence, eating... And then everyone yep. slowly shows back up again. Cool. That's right. Excellent. All right. Well, dinner done. Last task before setting out on our international diplomacy to maybe make peace with the Verasi <laughs> Empire. I am so excited for this. Holy maybe shit. Maybe start a war between two great nations. Maybe just knows? die all together to a giant water elemental? Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, true. You know? Anything, anything could happen. Um, we have enough time in our session to begin this maneuver. Um, and I do believe you were going to escort a goblin up the mountain, about two days up the mountain, then leave them to go deliver the message on their own, and then the party... Are you going to go straight to the, the meeting place at the lake? Or, or is this all a ruse and you're going to wait for them to get to the lake and then you're going to sneak around and attack their castle from behind? What's the plan? Plan's just to meet them at the lake. Although I will add that I thought of plan B, which is to drop off the letter with an invisible halfling. Whichever, mm. whichever plan sounds better to both of you. Mm. Uh... Whatever you prefer. I could totally go invisible. I might get my ass kicked, and I don't know what I would do if I did. But, <laughs> I mean, I yeah, could go. Yeah, it's really up to you. I think both plans are fine. Knock on the door, yeah. slip the thing through. I leave it to your discretion. Okay. Elaine. The, the great decision the maker. <laughs> Let's do the goblin. Let's do the goblin. I'm less worried about losing a goblin than losing a crumb. Way less worried. Oh. Thank you. I'm not telling the goblin that. 
we love all of those guys. What's the goblin's name that Joe isn't one yet? Oh, come on, Elaine, he's just a goblin. <laughs> wow. He's the special goblin. I bet we're gonna see the him again. The chosen one. Sorry. Our sacrificial lamb. Uh, nook Nook. No. Oh, nook. that's such a pathetic name. They're so good at what they do. We actually have a brand for baby bottles that's called Nook Nook. <laughs> I think I've actually heard of that brand. Yes, it's called Nook Nook. We do make pacifiers as well. Okay. Okay. Well, the party is going to spend two days going up the mountains. And then we're going to go to the meeting place. Who are we bringing? Are we bringing the entire army? Uh, you know, the, the small group that we've got. Or are we just bringing the, our leadership? I uh, emphasized in the letter that it was a neutral meeting place of leaders. So I think the four of us will do. Five of us, maybe, if you want Winnow. No, Will, I should stay back to uh, make sure she has the four down. Somebody, okay. They need some leader there. Then four of us. The four of us and Nook Nook. Yes. No, Nook Nook's with them. All right, he's going. And hopefully he makes it. Good luck. Yeah, I, I, have, I at the end say, uh, P.S. bring Nook Nook. Perfect. Uh, they're probably like, who the fuck is Nook Nook? You should have said the goblin. <laughs> okay well let's take a look at our regional map now whatever happens here however this letter is received it's gonna really set the tone for the remainder of this campaign because you've made the greatest olive branch opening you can short of bribery um very soft very diplomatic very hey let's sort this out we all have we all have our our lives that we want to get back to and claims and we're not trying to start an international incident here first i need crumb to roll me two sets of a d100 <laughs> okay I'm going to do it in two separate rolls because I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Do I want it to be high or low? I need to know for my prayer. Do you want interesting things to happen on your journey? No. Then you want high. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Oh, no. <laughs> That seven. Oh, we were so close. Going along so well. I'm gonna need the party to talk amongst themselves while I prepare our Wonderful. Now the army of fire elements oh. gonna get us. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. God is it's real. Okay. You know, on the other hand, if we all die oh. on our way there, we will never figure out if it would have been a diplomatic solution because we're all fried by the time they get That's to that lake. Well, that fucking is interesting. You know, okay. Neil could have at least given us some magic weapon if we were already going to fight all these elementals. But no. Is there a... Di hey, hey, diplomat of a group. Have you ever yep. tried diplomacy <laughs> with an elemental? Yeah, how about that one? Is there a way to communicate to them that we're chill? From my earlier rule, I don't even know if it speaks our language. Oh, I also that's think good. you should tell a fire elemental that you're chill. I feel like that's an insult. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. We could, like, hide in the lake. Can we get to the lake fast enough that we can no. jump in? No, 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 no. Remember the swimming part. You don't want to hide in the lake. Oh, shit. You're right, none of us. I'm surrounded by fire elementals. You don't want to hide in oh, the lake. Oh, that would be such a good way to go. You don't die in the fire <laughs> elemental. You He's drown. You're like drowning. You drown instead. Oh, so ironic. And then we play as the other side, trying to find out what happened. Why did the entire party drown in that lake before we arrived? Everything that must is be a great singed, plot. But they've drowned. Yeah. 
We just turn it into like a murder mystery from the other side. <laughs> oh. I'm scared of what Neil is plotting. The sinking of Drekis. You know, it's probably not even the fire elemental. Surprise! No, it's, it's the it's, water elemental. It's the entire. Uh, it's the entire Bullywog village coming out. Bullywogs are so cute. With Froglodon, their great king. I think we're gonna figure out why it's called the Jungle of Death. Froglodon. It's an excellent name. You can have it, Neil. I, I gift it to you. Merry Thank Christmas. Thank you. Froglodon, the Bullywog king. Yep. I hope we get that one. That means that one can be diplomacied with. Oh my god, that's true. Yeah. Vincent is going to. If Vincent dies and he does stand in front of Verossi trying to make a deal, I'm losing my shit, you know? That's how he has to go. He'll be like, ah, can't we talk about it? I'm sure we can figure something out. You know? I'll write a letter to death herself. Now, considering this is an island that has been raised back by the gods, there's not much godly activity here. Well, it also has only been a week in game. Oh. And we've not experienced any clerics yet. Did town even have a temple? Yes, there is a series of churches and temples in town. All right. I'll let it slide this time. I'm surprised. Do you witness godly activity on a daily basis? Weekly basis. Well, if you're the chosen one, Vincent, you'd understand. <laughs> oh, goodness. You're the chosen one. I'm just joking. She's not. It's uh, like Harry Potter. Just like the buff version of Harry Potter with a giant sword instead of a wand. Uh, All right, Elaine. I, no, Crumpet. Crumpet. Oh, thank God. Why? You are the one that rolled the seven. So you are the one that needs to roll this next die. Okay. This next it's die. the rock, isn't it? You're going to be picked up by the giant fucking bird. I'm losing my mind. What? No. This, this die roll is important, okay? You oh, want to roll okay. high, okay? I want to roll high. Yeah, you want to channel the highest roll that you can. Mm -hmm. um, you're rolling a 10-sided die. What does that mean? You're rolling... What D10? To see if it's left or right-handed. A 1d10. A 1d10, yes. For the sexual orientation of our encounter. Really? No. It's for <laughs> surprise. I thought it was a unicorn for a it, second. It's, it's, yeah. it's a moment. I was like, oh shit, we can sex our way out of this? Well, you might be able to, but that's you not what the be. role is here. Okay. High is good, right? High is good. High is can... good. All right. Oh, All that's right. really good. That's very good. So what we have is the party is getting towards the top of the pass up here. Mm -hmm. At the top of the pass, you're going to let the goblin go the rest of the way with this letter that you've written them. That's a terrible idea. Do we, have, wait, do we have backup paper and pens? Like, what if he just gets, like, yeah, do arrows? Yeah, backup goblin, we should have brought a second one. <laughs> These are complications, but you know what? Life is, you can't prepare for everything. You know, there's always the chance okay. that, it, that something bad goes. And that nine has narrowly avoided a highly dangerous situation. Because as you're getting towards the top of the pass, there's the this, you know, it's, it's the wilderness. There's always the sound of winds or creatures scurrying about or things being stepped on or leaves rustling. Like it's the top of the mountains in a natural environment. It's a, a noisy-ish place. But there's something about this particular sound of like pebbles knocking against pebbles that draws your attention from. And as... You're making your way through this pass. You can look up and you can see that there are orcs waiting in ambush. Oh, so close to you at the top of this pass. And you have, with that nine, avoided the outright ambush and have enough time to alert your party. Is it only four of them? To the presence of orcs. Well... Yes, yes, it's only four of them. Yes. Of course it is. Yes. Right. 
And this I is only where see we, four. Yeah. This is where Got we it. are as the party is, you know, coming through this pass. Now, the pass makes it look like it's cobblestone. It's not, this is just a dirt path, but I don't have this map without the cobblestone. So just think of this as dirt. Um, and it's as you're walking through here that you, you see these people, these orcs up there. They've got javelins in their hands. They're crouched low, clearly looking down in your direction. You've managed to glance up and see them, and you have enough time to at least call the party to a halt or to tell them that there's orcs, or you have a moment to inform and the others if you wish. fully seen us coming. Oh, absolutely, yeah. They're... They've been watching us. They are they are currently watching you with with javelins in hand, ready for an ambush. Got it. But you have I'm, spotted it. Yes, I'm going to see them, and I'm going to be like, Link, do you have water on you? I give you my water skin. Yeah, I'm thirsty, and then I'll go in to reach for the water skin, and I'll be like, there's an ambush. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. I'll. Guess I'll take off my backpack. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and he snacks look... in there as well. And then as I go down there by her backpack, I'll be like, Doo, doo. All right, and I'll tell. Um, I don't know if orcs speak common or not. Some do apparently, and some don't. So I'll tell uh, Nook Nook. Yes. Tell them. Tell them we have a message for their leader. We're not here to fight. And as I stand, I stand back up and I like step in front of him so he doesn't get hit by a javelin. Okay. He can raise his voice, right? Yeah, yeah. The goblin will will turn his head to the sky, all out in orcish. Um, a whole bunch of stuff in the the guttural orcish tone. And Nook Nook is gonna have to make a charisma check here. Oh wow, that's what you get for this, <laughs> for relying on the green little guy. Come uh, on. Uh, let's see, Vincent, would you roll me two d eight for Nook Nook's charisma? I agree. Okay. I think that's a Vincent that. roll. You try to save this guy, and I'll make him useful. Hey, that's, that's not okay. bad. Give me that's a charisma okay. check. Give me a charisma check Nook -Nook. for Nook Nook. Twenty twenty plus right. twelve. Come on, Nook Nook. Oh what? my wow, God! Let's go, Nook Nook. Oh. Oh, yeah. Nook Damn. Nook calls out in a clear goblin voice. I'm going to translate Calm. for you, even though you don't know Steady. these words. Orcs on the hills, hold fast. The warriors around me bring message for your great leader. Here is a written word. Speaking of negotiations, perhaps armistice. I know not, I am merely a goblin who is not literate and not privy to the messages, but surely this letter should reach your highest command before you take any drastic action that might otherwise impact your lives. Today is not the day to fight. Today is the day to read. <laughs> and, um... Oh my god. Isn't that a word? Isn't that a word? Well done, Nook Nook. Well done. Uh, I think with a 31, one of these orcs will come on down and take the message from Nook Nook. Um, not know how to read it, obviously. And then yes, Nook it's uh, sealed in a letter. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they will let Nook Nook go. And Nook Nook will hurry back behind Entelin's skirts, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> well done, Nook Nook. <laughs> I don't know what he said, but I just assume he did well because I'm not getting speared. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. Nope. I ask Nook Nook, uh, do they know that they should deliver this to their leader right away? Yes, yes, my lord. Absolutely. Well, excellent. Then our job is done. Thank I you. Turn Thank you. backwards. Good. That's very good of you, Nook Nook. You've done so well that you can just come home with us. And the party can step out of the pass. The letter still says PS Spring Nook Nook at the end. <laughs> now they're gonna think that it's like something that they don't understand. Like Nook Nook, is that like weed? Is that like 
Okay. Highly confusing. <laughs> well, there must be some secret magic word. Maybe this letter is cursed after all. We need to get this a translator. What is a nook nook? <laughs> well, this it must be a Dracusian speciality. <laughs> this encounter check has gone better than anyone could ever have hoped. Instead of having really? to rely on the goblin to navigate the jungle of death and deliver a message, you've been able to put it directly in the hands of the enemy. By relying on the goblin for absolutely rocking their charisma check. Yeah, thank well God. Done. Well done on the seven, well done on the nine, well done on the 31. Party. Party. All right. Now it's just time for the five of you to head to the lake and await their return, um, their ascension, their their arrival. Uh -huh. Yeah, Which no means... need for nook nooks. I guess we'll just be four. What do you mean? No, actually, we probably should bring nook nooks. Behind? Yeah, let's you bring nook nooks. So sad. You literally just said you will have a place with us, and then you're like, oh, no, I gotta go home. <laughs> like, oh, what? Yeah, I, gotta I he might him. prefer home, but sure, he can come with us. He is coming with. Right. Maybe we need say. another diplomacy check <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out what happens next week on Rise of Drekus Chapter 2. We get to the meeting at Lake Casitas. That's it for today's session. Any final words before we go? Uh, you know, good job. That could have been fucking horrible. But Nook Nook really <laughs> saved us. I wonder if Crumb is going to have some appreciation for the goblin after this. Probably a little, like, a little. She's probably happy that, like, whatever the fuck he said, you know, maybe they're not so useless after all. But she just thinks that they're bad. Like, they eat babies. <laughs> yeah. But isn't that just their nature? You know, couldn't, isn't it possible that the baby-eating goblins could also be good people? If there was, like, a type of snake that, like, killed and ate humans, I wouldn't want to cohabitate with it or have it anywhere near me, you know? That's a very good way of putting that. Yeah, I'd be like, you can be your goblin -y selves over there, but... Yeah. <laughs> now, out of character, they sound so cute. I mean, it's probably not good that they eat babies, but in character, you know, Grump just doesn't like them. Mm -hmm. I think what the campaign in general shows really nicely is that those groups that have not been in touch with humans or human society act very differently from us or what you know what we know they have a very different system on how power works and who to rely on and who to follow um and some of them are open to negotiating and to learning new ways and adapting either because of that it you know gives them chance to survival um or simply because they are more open-minded than others, but others will not, and they will stick to their ways. And you can tell, you know, under different circumstances, if your mindset was different, there might be a real chance for diplomacy here, but it's just not doable with some of them. I... So you can try, but it might be frustrating sometimes. I am really excited that we went to, we're going to end up at this random location that probably none of us <laughs> expected to be, Lake uh, whatever, and yeah. that's going to be awesome. We'll see if uh, Elaine goes three for three with parlays. You've really had two of these before? Oh yeah, but they were single parlays last time. I want to commend Elaine just for, you know, giving the best Oscar worthy performance when she was talking to that half elf, mm. that was fantastic. Mm, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, I feel for that film. guy because he's so chill. You know, I feel like he's a really cool guy to hang out with and shoot the shit with. And then he meets Elaine, and I'm just, I feel very sorry for him because I'm like, you did a great job. <laughs> you made me believe that this was actually your story. You know, it's not. My dad has not beat me up and put me out by the stairs when I was a child. I promise. You're not telling a... me that you're not the bastard child of a ha of an elf. Uh, no, 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 Holy not shit. as far as I know. You know, not as far as I know. And if I was, I would never tell you. Ah. Well, we'll catch you all next week for some more Rise of Drekus Chapter Two. If you stick around in a little more than an hour, we're gonna have Rise of Drekus Chapter Three. We'll catch you then. With my husband.
with Bizarre. your husband, 